This is a special presentation from News Channel Nebraska. This broadcast is presented by Currency. Currency makes financing quick, easy, and secure for machinery, ag equipment, and more. Visit GoCurrency.com. Liberty First Credit Union, banking with purpose. Find out more at LibertyFirstCU.com. Midway Auto, for your next vehicle, go to ThinkMidway.com. It's a beautiful day for football in central Nebraska, and the Nebraska Kearney Lopers are looking to make it two victories in a row. It's game number three of the season for the Lopers, game number three under the tutelage of head coach Ryan Held. A victory over Northeastern State last week gets them to this point where they host Missouri Southern. The Lions enter with a one and one record. The Lopers have that same one and one record. I'm Michael Shively. He's Scott Hoffman. Glad you could be with us. And Scott, it, it doesn't get much better than this. Uh, it's a beautiful day, and we have some high-level MIAA football coming our way. Without a doubt. I mean, UNK's coming off of a big win last week against a much improved Northeast Oklahoma team. And Missouri Southern has vastly improved their program coming off a big win against Washburn on the road last week. UNK was able to build a lead in their second week game, their home opener, then had to hold off Northeastern State at the end, and they got it done. Yeah, it wasn't a situation where UNK really played poorly. It was more of a case of Northeast Oklahoma being a vastly improved team, and UNK showed a lot of metal by hanging on to that game and put together a long game-winning drive to kind of put things away last week. Missouri Southern has lived in the bottom section of the MIAA standings for the last decade, but Atiba Bradley has some momentum behind the Lions, and they're looking like a much improved team this season. Very much so. I've watched them on film a couple of times this week. They're big, they're physical, they are, they're a team that doesn't beat themselves. Uh, they do a good job of establishing the run on offense and, and uh, hitting you with big plays. And defensively, they're very talented. We expect a competitive game, and we'll break it down with the key players next. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. When you think about the UNK Lopers, you think about the rushing attack led by TJ Davis, but the message in practice this week was, we need to get the running backs involved, and Jamal Joseph is the lead back here this Saturday. Jamal had a great game last week against Northeast Oklahoma. He started out as the number two running back, but finished the game and was a big part of that last offensive drive that they had to ice the game last week. He's a solid runner. He hits, runs best between the tackles. He's, uh, he hangs on to the football, and he had a big pump block as well as being a good running back last week. Expecting a big game from the sophomore back are the Lopers. Conversely, the Lions, they're a team that likes to put it in the air. Luke Sampson, the sophomore quarterback, has been good so far. Yeah, he's a big play quarterback. He doesn't do as much with his legs as T.J. Davis, but he's very solid. Uh, he's got a lot of poise in the, in the uh, pocket. Uh, he's not very great. Uh, running the football, but he makes great decisions and gets the ball out of his hands pretty quick. We caught up with Ryan Held, the head coach for UNK, earlier today. We'll play that for you next and then get you to a noon kickoff between the Lopers and the Lions. UNK is a place where quality education meets hands-on learning, and going the extra mile gets rewarded. It's a place where you can put yourself out there, reach your goals, and set new ones you never thought possible. Be yourself, but develop the best version of you. Let us show you what you're made of. Be blue, be gold, be bold. Apply now to the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Learn more at unk.edu. Women have a one in eight chance for developing breast cancer. Early detection makes a difference. Beatrice Community Hospital's Imaging Center can help with the latest technology. From screening with 3D mammography, breast MRI, breast ultrasound, and breast biopsy. All services conveniently located in the BCH's Imaging Center. Schedule your screening today. Incredible care, incredibly close.
coach Ryan Held, the head man for the UNK Lopers, and want to know at home, what'd you like from last week's victory over Northeastern? Well, we knew it'd be a four quarter game. We knew they'd be better, and our kids just played through 60 minutes, and you know, we're, we got better in all three areas. We left a lot on the table, but you know, that's why we coach. We got to keep getting better. That game ceiling drive, that was a lot of TJ Davis. Are you getting used to having a guy that can just create magic back there at quarterback? Well, he's a special player, but even a better person, and I'm glad he's on our team. Your opponent today, Missouri Southern, an up and coming program. What do you see and what the Lions bring to the table? Well, they're better than they were last year. They're well coached. They have good football coaches. They have good football players. So I know our guys are really, really excited to go today. Noon kickoff. Uh, the team that's sleepwalking might get punched in the mouth. It might be a long day for them. So the team that comes out and ready to go, I think they'll have a chance to get this deal done. You were preaching physicality in practice. You guys ready for that? Yeah, I mean, this has to be a physical uh, battle. Um, you know, we have to be able to run the ball with the running backs. We got to be able to stop the run. We got to be able to not let them have big plays or a big play offense. They're going to milk the clock some. Uh, so we got to take advantage of our opportunities. We got to be good on third down. We were pretty good last week on third down. We got to be better this week. In the red zone, we, we sputtered a little bit. We got to be able to get touchdowns instead of field goal attempts. Thanks, Coach. Go get them. All right, appreciate you. That's Ryan Held with the Lopers. Stick around, starting lineups when we come back to Kearney. At Zollner Ford, come and see our great selection of new Ford vehicles. Whether you're looking to buy new or you need a car serviced, it's our pleasure to assist you. Our online website makes shopping even easier. Browse our massive inventory of vehicles or schedule your next maintenance appointment. We even offer drop-off and pickup services. Stop by today or visit us online at zollnerofbeatrice.com. A new year, a fresh start, a resolution to grow more, gain more, give more. The process is the same, plant, grow, harvest, but the way you do it is always evolving. And so are we, Aurora Cooperative, Grow, gain, give. Aurora and you. Welcome back. Welcome back here to... Welcome back. Welcome back to Foster Field. Michael Shively, Scott Hoffman with you. The UNK Lopers playing host to Missouri Southern. UNK enters this game 1-1. One and one. Missouri Southern with that same 1-1 one and one record. Head coach Ryan Held in his first season leading the Lopers. Atiba Bradley in his third season leading Missouri Southern. A 9-16 record during his tenure. Let's take a peek at the University of Nebraska Kearney, your school spotlight brought to you by Currency. Does your business need financing for equipment, trucks, or trailers? All you need is Currency. Visit GoCurrency.com. Enrollment just over 6,000. Population just under 35,000. Here at lovely Cope Stadium on the campus of UNK. We can see Kearney Reservoir just on the other side of the dam from our uh, vantage point in the press box right now. And uh, if you're watching at home right now in Kearney, head on over. It is a perfect day to take in some football. Captains walking out for the toss right now. We're getting ready for kickoff, scheduled for a noon beginning. The head official today is John Adams. Michael Shively, Scott Hoffman with you. Uh, Scott, an uh, interesting matchup today. Uh, uh, you have a team that's viewed as a run-heavy team in recent seasons in UNK and, and a pass-heavy team with Missouri Southern. But uh, uh, the Lions bring more to the table than just throwing the football. Their defense has impressed at times this year as well. Yeah, they've got a very talented defense. They've got uh, several transfers, as is the norm with most schools nowadays. But uh, uh, number eight, uh, one of their defensive linemen, uh, Fatal and uh, Jabril, uh, their strong safety are two young men that really show up. They, they do a lot in the secondary. And, uh, you know, they're going to put some pressure on TJ, I'm sure. 
Oh, there you mentioned him, T.J. Davis. He is the quarterback for the UNK Lopers. He now has 55 career rushing touchdowns. After a good performance last week, he was able to move into second all-time in rushing yards for a career at UNK. 3,840 rushing yards. He trails just Mike Miller, the outstanding running back from 2001 to 2004. He needs 979 to get the record. That's going to be tough. you think uh, TJ could do that here the rest of the season? Well, <laughs> uh, if anybody can, it can be it sure would be TJ Davis. Uh, obviously, he doesn't need much of a crease to get a big play on you. So, uh, you know, if he has a couple of games where he can get over the century mark, he's got a good chance. 57 career rushing touchdowns for Davis. That's 19 more than the next closest Nebraska Kearney <laughs> player ever. Third in career passing touchdowns and fourth in career passing yards. So uh, if you're wondering if he's one of the all-time greats, there's no doubt about it. Without a doubt. The Lopers send out their special teams unit to receive the opening kickoff. Jerquan Connors and Bailey Torres. You know, Bailey Torres gets some time out there, and uh, uh, this is really the first that we've mentioned his name through two games this season. He was a big play threat last year. We'll see if he can get going in special teams. Torres will take this kick, but it will uh, go out the back of the end zone for a touchback, and UNK sends out its offense. Colby Ellis is the offensive coordinator. UNK with an entirely new coaching staff this season after Josh Lynn's departure as the head coach heading to West Texas A&M. Ellis in his first time as a permanent offensive coordinator. He was the interim offensive coordinator for North Alabama last season uh, when uh, they fired their coach and Ryan Held, the Lopers head coach, was elevated from offensive coordinator to head coach. So he has called some plays, but Scott, this is a All right, half the distance to the goal and a penalty right away against the Lopers. Puts them with their back against the end zone. Hopefully they can uh, punch out a couple of first downs here and get some field position because the wind isn't really a factor, but it is in their face right now. So starting from their own 13, not what Colby Ellis would like, what I was saying. It is a... Uh, a play caller by committee situation with the coaches for UNK. It's not exclusively Ellis with his hand in it. Hand off to Jamal Joseph, bounces free from the first tackler and able to fight his way forward to the 19. A gain of six yards on first down. We set it in the open, Scott. We expect the Lopers to run their running backs and do it with Joseph. Yeah, Jamal is a, is a young man. He's pretty well, uh, you know, he's He's a pretty good size young man. He hits the holes pretty straight ahead, and he's pretty good in between the tackles. So that's a good start right there, a five- or six-yard gain. Sophomore played as a true freshman a season ago. Davis throwing and off target. He was trying to get it to Sev Foster, the wide receiver on that corner route, and it wasn't in the neighborhood. Uh, timing was a little bit off on that. TJ let the ball go before uh, Sev was, I think, ready for it and didn't really get his head around and able to spot the football. Brings up third down and four for the Lopers. Tough field position to open for UNK. Trying to avoid punting out of their end zone. Tight formation here in the shotgun. Davis, the throw wide, is caught, and for a first down, a good grab near the 30-yard line. It's Reggie Anderson, the 5'11", 170-pound junior out of Gaithersburg, Maryland. Reggie's kind of becoming that guy that uh, uh, TJ looks for. He's able to make some things happen after he catches the football. He's kind of shifty out there, and that's a good first down throw, by, uh, for, uh, throw for the first down by TJ. Good That's call by the coaches. Seven catches now, a team high for the Lopers. But expect them to spread the ball around. Ten UNK players have caught passes through two games. Joseph with a big hole, loses the football. It's on the turf, and it looks like Seb Foster was able to fall on that football to save what could have been a disastrous opening drive turnover. Pretty big hit by the, U by the uh, Missouri Southern player there, but uh, Jamal needs to hang on to that football. That was a good job by Seb trying to get the, getting on top of that football. A fortunate bounce. And Joseph takes a seat. Demarius Hosey enters the game. He's a 5'11", 210-pound senior running back. He has six carries for 18 yards on his ledger in 2023. 
low snap. Davis it, it breaks the play. He's running for his life and just takes a seat. A On poor fourth snap. Down there, you can't let those happen too much. Now we got to now we're behind the sticks a little bit. Now we got to make up for it. And beyond the the poor snap, there was also the running back going to the other side from right. what Davis expected. Yeah, there was a, a, a lot of mistakes on that play. Uh, Hosey stays in the ball game for second down and 15. Loper's offense putting up 26 points per contest so far, 330 yards per game. They're going four wide for second and 15. Shuffle pass. Here's Hosey. He's to the 40. Wrapped up uh, at the 44-yard line. That's a gain of eight and sets up third down and seven for the first reception for Hosey this season. That's a pretty good call by Coach Ellis right there because uh, uh, Missouri Southern was showing... Missouri Southern was showing man coverage, and they were bringing some pressure on there. So that was a good call to kind of mix things up. Big play in your first quarter, which is brought to you by John Henry's, our family, serving yours. The second, third down of this drive, and the Lopers go empty for third and six. Bringing some pressure. At least they're showing it. They've, they've bailed Only out rush three. Bit. Davis steps up in the pocket. Now rolling out, gets rid of the football. It's right at the line to gain. No, it was intercepted. Stepping in front of the football, making a terrific play. Peyton McKee, the nickelback for Missouri Southern, saw that football coming, stepped in front of the target, and picked it off. Looked like Sev maybe bobbled the football. It was in his hands and, and uh, kind of bounced up. And that's a great play by number 38 for uh, Missouri Southern, Peyton McKee. That puts them in great field position to start with here. That's exactly what happened. Awesome job by our camera crew today, getting that shot perfectly on screen in your Beatrice Community Hospital instant replay. And Sev Foster couldn't squeeze it, wound up right into the arms of Peyton McKee and a, an enormous play early on in this ball game. Handoff on first down. Charging through a linebacker is Anthodius Ashley a senior out of Phoenix, Arizona, Arizona, just his 12th carry on the season. Nathan Glades, we're not sure if we're going to see him today. He is the starting running back uh, through a couple of games for the Lions. 22 carries a team high, but the Joplin, Missouri native didn't see him in warm-ups, and he's not out there to start the game. Missouri Southern lined, uh, uh, lined up in a big formation that time with a couple of tight ends, and it just tried to get some... Punch UNK in the face. Luke Sampson is the quarterback, has time in the pocket, and throws incomplete. And the Lopers, David Lilly, or Jabia Talong, actually. Jabia was looking, oh, that is Lilly. He was looking for an offensive pass interference call. Yeah, he did a good job of breaking in front of that throw, and uh, the receiver, number eight, kind of pushed him down. But that's one of those that you're probably not going to get very often. A huge opportunity for the Nebraska Kearney defense here in poor field position. Can they force a three and out? Sampson with Ashley to his left. Watch for number eight, Stoshak here. Wide open on the left sideline there, Stoshak. Nobody in the same zip code as the top receiver for the Lions, and he scoots up to the 26 with ease. That's a 20-yard gain on third down. UNK brought a blitz that time, and I think we had a uh, missed coverage out there, obviously, and, and uh, Stoshak ended up being wide open on that play. And he doesn't need the help of the defense to have success either. Stoshak came into this contest with eight catches for 200 yards and two touchdowns. So he's averaging 100 yards and a touchdown per game. He's kind of been their go-to guy out there on the perimeter. Good fail by the, by the Lopers there. Ashley stuffed, had nowhere to go, upended by Robert Bishop Jr., a sophomore from California, the safety making his fourth tackle of the season. Today's broadcast is brought to you in part by Midway Auto. For your next vehicle, go to thinkmidway.com. Excellent car dealerships here in Kearney, right near Interstate 80. Just a one-yard gain on that handoff. Here's Sampson to throw. Lobs, right side, incomplete. 
And it looked like Stoshak there was trying to draw a flag by yeah. tripping himself. Yeah. The official did not fall for it. Pretty good coverage by Amari there. Or, uh, Armani, excuse me, uh, by the Lopers. Armani Webster, the most veteran of the corners for Nebraska Kearney, 6'1", 190, senior from Chicago, has been here for his whole career. And done a great job. He really uh, kind of showed up last year as a, as a junior, and, and uh, he's kind of the leader out there in the secondary along with Trey O'Gwin. The Lions are loading up the right side of the field for third down and nine. Sampson in trouble, and he goes down. A sack for Nebraska Kearney and Joko Willis. It's fourth down and out comes special teams for the Lions. Had a little twist stunt by Joko. He was started out outside in coverage and wrapped around uh, underneath the guard and uh, he put a pretty good hit on that quarterback for the, for the Southern Lions. Out here to try the field goal is Drake Reese. He's a sophomore from Cassville, Missouri, who has made two field goals this season, both between 40 and 49 yards. This will be a 49 yard try. The kick is up, it has distance, and it's true. Pretty good a 49-yard field goal. Yeah. Impressive kick by Drake Reese. And it gives the lead to Missouri Southern. They capitalize on the Nebraska Kearney turnover and have the three-point lead on News Channel Nebraska. For over 40 years, Claybaugh Pharmacy has been your trusted, family-owned, full-service pharmacy. We provide traditional medical options, medical equipment, immunizations, and over-the-counter products. We take pride in going above and beyond to improve the health of our community. And to ensure you have a seamless experience, manage your profile and refills with the touch of the finger from home. Claybaugh Pharmacy in downtown Beatrice, your hometown family-owned pharmacy. A 3-0 lead for the Missouri Southern Lions. They get the football in Nebraska Kearney territory after the fumble and capitalize. UNK uh, only held, they, they were able to hold them to three, though. It took a 49-yard field goal, a really good kick to get points on the board. Given the field position and a blown coverage for a first down, I thought UNK's defense played exceptionally well on that drive. They really uh, made some big stops and, and really didn't allow Missouri Southern to do a lot except for complete one pass. Really good look at the crowd here. It filled in a noon kickoff earlier than typical, but uh, uh, folks getting here just in time for kickoff. Uh, it's good to see the stands full here for the Lopers. Uh, if you're wondering on television, you see that opposite side that doesn't have a lot of folks there. That is the visiting side, the side that we're broadcasting from that our main cameras are on. That is the home stands, which are uh, almost completely full on a beautiful day for Division II football. Man, Drake Reese, that dude's got a heck of a leg. 6'2", 205-pound sophomore from Cassville, Missouri. He's hit six point afters and seven tries, and now three for three on field goals this season between 40 and 49 yards. Yeah, he's a heck of a kicker. He's put the ball through the end zone both times on kickoffs, and that was a – yeah, it looked like he had a lot more distance on that field goal even. He probably could have hit it from another few yards out. The wind is blowing about 10 to 15 miles per hour, but it's blowing across the field. It was not a factor on any of these kicks. Blowing towards the Lions' sideline. Davis, after throwing his second pick, one that you really can't fault him for, is back out and throws to Hosey on first down for a short gain to the 30. That's a pickup of five. It's second and five. That's a good first down call. Just to kind of keep the, uh, the defense honest, you release that back into the flat. That's an easy throw and completion for, for TJ, and you get five yards. That's as good as, as a five-yard run. We haven't talked about the offensive line yet for Nebraska Kearney, but uh, they do have more typical setup out there today. They gave him four yards on second and six. Hosey gets the carry, bounces outside, has a nice lane, still moving for that first down to the 43. That's a solid pickup to move the chains. 
It actually was a pretty good job by the wide receiver. He, he cracked inside for the safety, who usually is a better tackler. Uh, kind of expecting that corner to pop inside there, and he didn't. He made the tackle, but uh, that's kind of how you do it. You want to leave, if you have to leave a, um, a defender unblocked, you want to do it with what's typically your least effective tackler, and that's usually the corners. The Lopers burn a timeout in the first quarter. We'll take a break with them. UNK on offense, trailing by three. Tom Dinsdale Automotive is celebrating our 20th anniversary. 20 years of building lifelong relationships. 20 years of providing superior customer experiences. 20 years of supporting the community. For 20 years, we've been building trust and loyalty by treating every customer like family on every visit. We're proud to serve Grand Island and the surrounding areas. Thank you for 20 great years, and we look forward to many more. Help us celebrate 20 years of service. Stop in today. Look at the UNK huddle. That offensive line goes like this. Hunter Push at left guard. John Merton is the center. James Kent, the right guard. Isafe Fatou makes his return at right tackle. And uh, piece by piece, this patchwork offensive line is getting some guys back, whether it's eligibility or injury. Yeah, I, you know, and it's good to see those guys back in normal positions. Asafe's back, and, and uh, he's a big part of the offensive line. I will say that the... Uh, that the patchwork O-line the last two weeks has really done some good things. Somehow Davis is still alive here and runs out of bounds at the 44-yard line, 43-yard line, able to get to about four or five. And multiple times it looked like he was dead to rights, but uh, you never quite have him until he's actually back on the turf. As we've seen, uh, you and I for the last two years doing this, but even for the years before that, that young man, just has a way of making people miss, and uh, it's got to be extra frustrating if you're a defensive player trying to play against him. Second down and six. You really need to work to get a sack on number two in blue and gold. Trey Moore comes in motion. They're trying to get it to him and didn't have time to do it. The Lions get pressure right on the face of the quarterback. That's Nick Cruz, the junior defensive end. It looked to me like uh, <clears throat> that play was designed to, to uh, take advantage of a blitz look, and, and uh, unfortunately the timing just wasn't there. Uh, they came off the edge with the blitz. If TJ, TJ read it well, if he could have got the ball in Trey's hands, I think Trey would have picked up a pretty good chunk of yardage. Cruz, who made the tackle, a Missouri Western transfer, moving down from St. Joe to Joplin. Third down and six for UNK. And they have an open target. Foster bobbles, does make the catch, but it's short of the first down marker. Foster with consecutive bobbles, the last one costing his team possession of the football, and this one costing what likely could have been a first down if he caught it cleanly, turned and fell forward for a couple more yards. As a former receivers coach, we used to tell him, you got to catch it once, not twice. But, uh, you know, I don't know what Sev, he's got to get that... Uh, going because he's he's a, shown that he's a really solid wide receiver. He's just had a little trouble here for two, two two plays in a row. Foster coming into this contest with five catches for 96 yards and a score, but the last couple third down plays that went to him were not positives for the Lopers. The punt from uh, Hunter Kraus hangs oh. up in the air and UNK runs into the return man. That's David Lilly who collided with Stoshak at the 23. That's going to set up the Lions once again in good field position. It is. And, I, you know, I don't think I, I can fault David there. Uh, the ball kind of hung up in the wind. He's running down trying to, trying to make a play. And that fair catch signal came awfully late. And the ball just happened. To, the re return man just happened to come up, and they made contact. It's one of those unfortunate circumstances that happen. But it does put Missouri Southern in good field position again. Tough play for the redshirt junior, Wahoo Bishop Newman product. The Lopers had been solid in special teams, uh, really coming into this game, uh, primarily in the return game. UNK ranked first in the conference in both punt return and kick return. They blocked a punt last week and generally have had good return coverage as well. 
Exactly. Well, you know, and then you've got an all-conference punter in Hunter Kraus, uh, and unfortunately, he's kind of a hang time guy, and there's just enough of a breeze. He got that ball up in the jet stream, and it just kind of hung up there and, and created the situation where Sostak came up to, to receive the fair catch, and David just wasn't able to get out of his way. So Missouri Southern will start with the football at their own 38 pretty good spot to be their previous drive started at the unk 49 yeah. so field position squarely on the side of the lions and i'm sure uh, i didn't see how the the uh, coin flip went but if they deferred i'm sure that was on their mind they were going to try to take the win right away and play field position against unk and so far it's worked out for them but they only managed 18 yards last time out on seven plays the loper defense Trying to have a repeat performance here. The Lions overload one side of the field again. Three wideouts on the left. Sampson hands off. And a good cutback. Spin move and first or a, a few yard pickup on the handoff to Javion Marlowe. He's a senior and one of many transfers from FBS programs. Yeah. He used to play for Vanderbilt. Yeah, they've got they've got a share of them. They've got Washington State, Florida, Vanderbilt. Um, you had Central Florida out there. Sam Houston, a Division One program. Lots of high level transfers joining Atiba Bradley's squad. Fake on the jet sweep. This is a different quarterback in there, and he has a big gain. Tripped up at the last second. That's Trey O'Gwin spoiling a terrific carry from Akeem Gilmore. That's his third carry of the season, and this one is the biggest. It flips the field and sends the Lions all the way to the 34. Yeah, a little bit of a wildcat look there. They took uh, their starting quarterback, uh, Sampson, put him on the sideline, put a wide receiver in there in the backfield and ran a fake jet sweep and pulled the lineman for a counter look. And uh, he's a fast player. He was able to get some big first down. Oh, Gwynn just got a shoestring and was able to make that tackle. A pass this time to Gilbert. And Parker Wise tackles him. The football's loose and scoots out of bounds. The Lions fortunate to maintain possession. They do get the completion to Gilmore and a first down. Yeah, that's unfortunate that that ball just kind of bounced the way it did because we had a chance to get that thing turned around and, and uh, actually could have maybe if we could have caught that in there, got some positive yardage out of it. Armani Webster came in after Wise tied up Gilbert and Webster stripped that football, just wasn't able to get two hands on it and possess it. But here is Missouri Southern in the red zone. Gilbert hustled to the line and now looks to the sideline with Marlowe in the backfield with him. It's a give. And the back has a solid gain. That's near a first down. It is a first down. Got it. Yep. 11 a yards. Zone. Yep. Impressive drive mounting for Missouri Southern. It started at their own 38. They've already made it in four plays, 53 yards. Hopefully UNK can rise to the occasion here and, and at least hold them to a field goal if possible. Today's broadcast is brought to you in part by United Healthcare, where small towns matter. First down and goal from the eight-yard line. Sampson wants to throw. Stepping up in the pocket over the middle, it's caught right at the, the goal line, and it is across the goal line for a touchdown. Sampson finds uh, Jaden Shostak. That's Shostak's third touchdown catch, and for Sampson, through two games and a quarter, he already has seven touchdown passes. I ran a, real, a little... Uh what we call a rub route in there. Number five came across in motion and was able to run an outcut and shows that came uh, off his hip and was able to open up and it was a good throw by the quarterback, um, Sampson. So tough situation for UNK here. 
The Lopers are going to need a comeback, and they do get the punt block or the point after block. That's Tell Spees that busted through the line. A one-man wrecking crew, and that hit his chest. He knocked it down. So Spees with the point after block, keeping that score at 9-0. The Lopers try to get some offense going when we return to Kearney. Life is a wild ride. It's important to have a trusted partner along the way. Liberty First Credit Union exists to provide its members with affordable financial services. Whether it is a large purchase, a new car or home remodel, overcoming obstacles, or chasing your dreams. Financing life is what we do best. Give us a call or visit libertyfirstcu.com. NCN Sports is brought to you by Midway Auto. For your next vehicle, go to thinkmidway.com and by News Channel Nebraska. Follow us on Twitter at NCN Sports for more highlights, interviews, rankings, and our full schedule. The Lions kick off and get a touchback. UNK will bring the offense out, trailing 9-0 in the opening quarter at home against Missouri Southern. You know, the wind, it, you'd like to think it isn't a big factor, but it has played a role here in uh, the first quarter. Um, Let's look again at that touchdown. Sampson able to avoid some pressure and step up, deliver a good ball, almost hit the umpire with it, but uh, squeezed it into Stoshak. Yeah, it was a good job by the, by the quarterback of just kind of sitting in there because it looked like initially we were going to get some pressure on him. Now, interesting fact, uh, Missouri Southern averaging 27 points per game. So they've scored 54 points, but that was just their third trip to the red zone this season. That's amazing. Uh, obviously, and I was watching film earlier this week, they've had some big plays, you know, some long chunk yard touchdowns. Um, but to only be in, in the red zone three times, UNK just burned their second time out of the first quarter. And Coach Held frustrated. Didn't have the personnel in there that he wanted. It sends Reggie Anderson to replace Zorian Stanton. And now Coach Held uh, going out and he's, he's speaking with the players. This is the second time that, uh, that our hunch that he's called the timeout because he didn't have the right personnel out there. And I think those are some growing pains when you're trying to install a new scheme. Uh, I mean, I know they've had spring football, and this is the third game of the year. You kind of hope that you're past those. But when you're trying to play a lot of players and, and do a lot of personnel changes, sometimes that happens. Jamal Joseph is the running back. Davis brings tight end Trey Moore in motion. He didn't motion as far as Davis wanted him. TJ takes the knee-high snap. Gets the completion. Zorian Stanton bounces off of the tackle, goes backwards. He will still get the first down, a pickup of 11. Just a little seam route inside. It looked like they were in a one-high look, and, and uh, UNK ran four vertical routes, and good job by TJ seeing it. Good job by Zorian hanging on to that thing. He's got a knack for catching the ball in traffic and kind of bouncing around and getting some yardage afterwards. Third catch of the season for Stanton. He did score a touchdown against Central Oklahoma on the road. Now Davis holding his hands out, looking to the sideline, making sure he has the right players on the line of scrimmage. The sixth-year quarterback gives to Joseph a nice seam for a five-yard pickup on first down. This has been kind of a strange first quarter. UNK has done some really excellent things in, their, in all three of their first series, but then they just managed to make a critical error at the wrong time, and it's given the ball back with good field position to Missouri Southern, and Southern is capitalized. An empty set for Davis. He wants to throw on second and five, gets the short completion, and has the first down. 
Is that Stanton again? It is Zorian Stanton with two catches this drive. And the Lopers navigate into Lions territory. And they're going fast. Flag fast. flies. <laughs> Unfortunately, too fast. I think uh, UNK probably didn't wait till the ball was ready to be snapped. That's called on Stanton, the wide receiver. He gets a breather. Cole Brown comes out to spell him. And it's first and 15. Uh, once again, though, you got to capitalize now. You put yourself behind a little bit. You've had a couple of first downs. Things are going pretty well, and all of a sudden now you're first and 15 as opposed to maybe being second and five or whatever the case may be. Two penalties for 27 yards. Actually, three penalties for 32 yards against the Lopers in quarter number one. Davis throwing to the sideline. It's caught. Foster squeezes the football. And the passing game heating up for the Lopers. That one goes for 16 yards. Uh, it's good to see Zeff make that play because he's bounced a couple off of his hands. And he had a chance. If he could have kept his feet, he might have scored on that. It's a good throw. Right between a cover two look defensively and somebody moved. It looks like a false start again. Three penalty markers on the field. It's on Merton, the center, for the snap infraction. That's four penalties against the Lopers who came into this game with 11 through two games. That hadn't been a, a major issue. There's a, a little ginger there heading to the sideline, Asafe Fatu. Yep. We had just talked about them getting him back. He was not putting a ton of weight on his legs. Uh, penalties hadn't been a big issue for the Lopers, but they had been for Missouri Southern, who right. had 15 penalties in two games. Yeah. And it's just kind of a, a changed a little bit this, this uh, quarter this, so far. This has been a tough quarter for the Lopers. The lob pass goes off of the back of the defender, Colton Winder, the linebacker coming over. And, and another timing situation. If that had been a half second one way or another, we might still see Reggie Anderson running. Yeah, I agree. It, was a, it looked like a, initially a pretty good throw. They brought him out of the backfield, ran what we call a wheel route, and uh, he was up the, sh up the numbers. It was a good play by the Missouri Southern defensive back, but uh, had TJ put that on the line a little bit more, it might have been his touchdown. Instead, second down and 15. Everybody on the right side of the formation. Oh, come on. And they'll move Joseph back to the left. It's a shovel pass. Joseph with the center in front of him slips to the left and gets four yards out of it. Third down and 11, right on the fringe of field goal range. Unfortunately, UNK is just, they're just missing something. They're just not clicking 100% right now. They're going to get the start of the second quarter with the wind of their back, and hopefully that's, that's a big factor. UNK trailing button by nine, but they're moving the football. They'll have a third down and 11 nearing field goal range when we return to Kearney after an interesting first quarter. At first, I was really nervous and intimidated to buy a ring. My experience at Starter Hamel was very easy. I felt like I walked out with the ring that was going to make her go wow and say yes. I love my ring. It is so beautiful. I get compliments on it all the time. I always tell them Starter Heyman. I love it. Yeah, we would definitely recommend Soccer Heyman. We're definitely, definitely coming, coming back. back. <laughs> sure. We have a wedding band to buy. So. We do, yes, we have a wedding <laughs> band, so we'll be back for that. Sarder Heyman Jewelers, downtown 12th and O, South Point Pavilions, and Grand Island. Welcome back to Cope Stadium, Foster Field. Michael Shively, Scott Hoffman with you. 9-0 the score. Missouri Southern takes advantage of excellent field position, one caused by an interception and one uh, after a penalty following a punt. But now UNK, this is a key drive to start the second quarter. They have third down in Lions territory. Yeah, hopefully they can come away with a, a big play here and get a first down and keep the drive going. But at least they have the wind of their back. And, it, you know, you hate to keep harping on that, but it has become a little bit of a factor here. Well, uh, j just looking at this uh, first quarter, a little awkward. Awkward is a great word. Yeah, yeah. Uh, UNK, uh, whether it's bobbling some passes, uh, 
whatever it may be, penalties. It just hasn't looked crisp yet no, for UNK. Not at all. They they just seem to be a little bit on edge and uh, are not playing loose like they did last week, and it's it's kind of showing up a little bit against a, a team that will make you pay if you do make some mistakes. Missouri Southern under the leadership of Atiba Bradley. He is coaching at his alma mater in his third season. Was a 2005 graduate of Missouri Southern where he was a two-time all-conference player at linebacker. Then worked up the ranks. He was defensive coordinator at Division II McKendree before getting this job. And before that, he was co-defensive coordinator at the University of South Dakota at the FCS level. Yeah, he's got a good background, and he's done a great job with the Lions. He took over kind of a bad situation, and he's turned him around in his three seasons that he's been the head coach. Zane Schwung is the running back for third down and 11. A big play for UNK, and they call quarterback draw. Davis bouncing outside and getting a medium gain up to the 27, maybe, or give him the 26. So that's a pickup of six, forcing fourth down and five. I think in this situation, you, you almost have to try to get some points on the board uh, rather than go for fourth, go for it on fourth down. You just need. Uh, you know, that was a pretty good drive by UNK, but they just need to get something on the board here. This will be a 45-yard try for Gabe Hines, who is one for two on the season. The Kearney native gets the kick up, and it looks good. It isn't. It was Kinda wide hooked. to the left, had the distance, and I think it just hooked at the last second. That wind is blowing that direction a little and might have helped take that Heinz kick wide. Yeah, just kind of a, looked like it was going dead center. I couldn't tell from here, uh, you know, if it was going to be good or not, but it did look like it kind of hooked to the left. So another tough setback for Nebraska Kearney. Um, They've seen a, a, an interception that was created by a bobbled pass. They've seen what, what likely could have been a third down conversion pass drops. They've seen four penalties go for 37 yards and now a missed field goal. But still only down nine points. That ball was knocked away. Tell Spees. Oh, if you're looking for some bright spots, <laughs> you got the senior from Mullen. He is a steady force on that line. Yeah, Missouri Southern had a screenplay set up, and it looked like it was going to go for a little bit, and that was a great job by Tell. I, I will say that our, our uh, defensive line recognized it and kind of slowed up and, and put the brakes on. So uh, good job by the Loper defense. Tell Spees, a familiar name for Loper fans, six foot three, 295-pound senior. Part of a Loper legacy in his family. Had a brother that played for UNK as well. Now the coach down at Loomis. Thanks to Tell's efforts, it's now third down and 10. Big third down here. Hopefully the UNK can UNK defense can rise to the occasion. Uh, if, if they can get them off the field, they, they stand to get some good field position with the punt into the wind. That pass was intended for... Six foot three wide receiver Ezekiel Lang and was about ankle height. Missouri Southern wants time out. Atiba Bradley takes it on the far sideline. A big snap coming up in the opening series for the Lions of the second quarter. Lopers trying to get a stop defensively, trailing by nine. At Zollner Ford, come and see our great selection of new Ford vehicles. Whether you're looking to buy new or you need a car serviced, it's our pleasure to assist you. Our online website makes shopping even easier. Browse our massive inventory of vehicles or schedule your next maintenance appointment. We even offer drop-off and pickup services. Stop by today or visit us online at zollnerofbeatrice.com. A timeout taken by Missouri Southern and Atiba Bradley ahead of this third down and 10 from their own 28. And this is the, the best opportunity for this Nebraska Kearney defense so far to get a stop and set their offense up in what could be good field position. Yeah, you hope. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's a situation where we haven't made Missouri Southern punt yet, and if, if we can make them punt into whatever win there is, it, it, at least it in, it, the indication from when UNK's punted, it's a difference. 
Sampson, a quick pass. Has it to his wide receiver on the right with blockers out there, but he can't spin free. That's Stoshak. When in doubt, they go to Stoshak. Already his 10th grab of the season, and that time he had nowhere to go thanks to the Loper secondary. Great job by the defensive secondary by the UNK Lopers of stopping that, uh, playing off the blocks, and uh, saw a lot of blue shirts rallying to the football. Play ended up being cleaned up by Robert Bishop Jr. He's really had a nice ball game so far. Zane Schwong stands at his own 30. This punt uh, uh, coming from Mitchell Corey, and it's a short punt and heads out of bounds. And uh, we were just talking about it. That wind, it's, it's a weird wind. It's been really variable in both its direction and its intensity right. and could have had an effect on that punt, uh, although it might have just been a shank. It only goes to the 48 of the Lopers. Well, when you look at the flag, it doesn't look like it's that big of a – I mean, it's, it's the flag's standing out there a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be as big of a wind as it is, but it, it's played a role in the kicking game so far. So out trot the Lopers, and nothing really has consistently gone well for them through 16 and a half minutes of football. Right. But score a touchdown here, and you're only down two points. Exactly. And, and uh, you know, you got to think that, the, you know, UNK has made some plays. It's just a situation where they haven't been consistent. They've managed to find one play in every drive that kind of puts them behind the chains, and it's cost them a little bit. If they can just – fix some of those problems and just get a good drive together. I think they can get right back in this thing. Well, we did mention how that offensive line was getting some bodies back. Uh, we'll monitor and see if Asafe Fatou gets back out there. He kind of limped off the field. But there are some other players that are missing that could be affecting things. Kevin Brown was the starting running back the right. first couple weeks. He's out with a shoulder injury. DJ Gross had a terrific catch for a big first down conversion at tight end last week. He's not available today either. So we're seeing some different bodies out there for the Loper offense. Yeah, they're kind of banged up in that offense. Offensive line, you hate to see Asafe go out. He's, he's still on the sideline. Hopefully he doesn't have too bad of an injury. Davis throwing on first down, and it's caught. Zorian Stanton holds onto the football between a pair of Lions tacklers, and that's good for about a 20-yard pickup. And Zorian and TJ played together for the last two years, and it's good to see that, uh, that combination come back. It's almost like... Uh, TJ's kind of got comfortable throwing a ball to Zorian, and Zorian's making some great catches in traffic. Stanton listed as the reserve on the two deep, but he has emerged so far today as a go-to receiver. Already three grabs for number three. Hosey is in the pistol behind Davis and gets the toss on the misdirection, and Hosey into some open field, crashes over a defender to the 27, picking up seven yards on first down. So far, so good for UNK. I mean, they had a big first down catch on, uh, on the opening play of the drive, and now a big seven-yard run. So a little counter option action there. Avery Bass, the defensive back, a senior out of Antioch, Tennessee. East Los Angeles Community College transfer. Uh, Missouri Southern gets them from all over, whether it's JUCO, high school, or a <laughs> D1 transfer in some spots. That's kind of the nature of the game anymore. Hosey. Makes a hard cut up field, gets the first down. Good vision by Demarius, and he trots forward to inside the 20. They're at the 19-yard line after an eight-yard pickup. Little stretch play there by uh, the Coach Ellis called by UNK. And, and that was actually Tamikis Napier, pardon me. Napier, 5'8", 205-pound junior. I know the coaching staff really likes the transfer from Reedley College out of Tennessee. So Tamikis Napier now in the backfield. He gets the ball again and stumbles forward just a yard there to the 18. Second quarter and important quarter in this ball game and it's brought to you by O Street Carpet. That's Steve Carper and the crew over at O Street Carpet in Lincoln. Did get two yards on that rush. Yeah, and that looked like it was going to open up a little bit better. He just kind of lost his footing. Uh, UNK really needs to get four or five yards here to put themselves in a good third down situation if they can't get the first down. They did just miss a field goal heading this direction. 
Lots of motion for the Lopers. They changed out personnel ahead of this snap, and with three seconds on the play clock, they have to burn their third timeout of the first half. We'll step aside. It's second down and eight for the Lopers, trailing by nine on the Aurora Cooperative scoreboard. What does farming mean to you? For most, it's hard work, dedication, and livelihood. Unfortunately, that also comes with risk. At Nebraska Crop Insurance in Beatrice, they know the nonstop dedication involved to keep your family protected from that risk and ensure their livelihood. Not only do they know everything about the coverage you need, they're also farmers themselves. So protect what means the most to you with the agent who knows what it means to be a farmer. Nebraska Crop Insurance, 615 Dorsey Street in Beatrice. Ashley's Labor Day Sale is your last chance to save big on summer's top styles. Visit your local store to shop Labor Day hot buys, all just $5.98 each while supplies last. Shop featured finds starting at only $17 per month or $9.99.99. And with summer coming to a close, you can save up to 50% on outdoor furniture. Plus, we offer special financing options for every budget. Visit your local Ashley stores in Kearney, Grand Island, and North Platte for the best Labor Day furniture deals only at Ashley. Zane Schwong enters at running back ahead of this second down and eight. Ryan Held and the Lopers have called three timeouts, still with 11 minutes to go in this first half. Davis throws back to Schwong. Schwong hauls it in, nice has some call. space. He's to the five and pushed out of bounds just shy of the pylon. It will be first down and goal for the Lopers after the 15-yard gain on the pass to the running back. That was a great play call by Coach Ellis there. A little... Uh, uh, flow screen, if you will. You fake the handoff and then throw back to Zane. And, uh, you know, obviously it would have been great if he could have got in, but we should be able to come away with some points here, I hope. Ball is at the three-yard line. Tamikas Napier stays in at running back. Low snap. Give to Napier. Napier around the edge, and he finds Paydirts. Nice the cut. Lopers are on the scoreboard. And a strong drive for UNK here in the early parts of the second quarter. It's really good to see UNK do that. Uh, it was a good cut by Napier. He started out, that play was supposed to go to the right. I think he's got some good vision and made a great cut back to the left and, and uh, took it into the end zone. Tamika's Napier had not had a carry before this drive on the season. He becomes the featured back and he scores his first touchdown as a loper. Gabe Hines for the point after, and this one is true. That makes it 9-7. to seven. In a hurry, the Lopers cut it to a two-point game on the Midway Auto Dealer scoreboard. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. Order your dream vehicle today with no money down. If you don't love it when it arrives, leave it with absolutely no obligation. We are professional grade at Central Nebraska's premier GM dealer. Midway Chevrolet, Buick GMC and Kearney or think midway.com slash GM. From the moment something didn't feel quite right to that ambulance arriving at your door. From the immediate diagnosis to the surgery that followed to the long list of lifestyle changes and that family gathering that everyone always talked about but for whatever reason kept getting postponed, to the moment you sat back and realized how grateful you are for everything you have. We've been here for you, just around the corner. Columbus Community Hospital. An important touchdown drive for Nebraska. Kearney gets the Lopers to down just a couple points. And a field goal that was close. If it had gone in, then you'd be looking at UNK with a one-point lead. Instead, they'll be kicking off, trailing by a couple points. And after an awkward first quarter, 
could be a lot worse for Ryan Held's yeah, team. Yeah, UNK's offense looked much more comfortable in that drive. They did some good stuff. There were some good play calls, and kids made some plays. So, um, you know, maybe it was just getting the bugs out. Um, now we got balls falling off the tees. <laughs> and, the, and the wind is kind of changing again. You know, yeah. it's really swirling today. It's a it's a gorgeous, sunny afternoon in Kearney, and uh, the wind <laughs> not quite uh, as great as the temperature and the sun, uh, but <laughs> it's certainly playing a factor. Imagine the wind being a factor in Kearney, Nebraska. Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> not out of the ordinary here in Buffalo County. Six-play, 52-yard scoring drive for the Lopers. A high kick is playable for the Lions from the nine. Brought back to the 25, outside to the 30, 35. And a good return by the Lions sets them up. Uh, that's uh, David Bethune, the wide receiver and kick returner out of Jefferson City, Missouri. Little cutback return is what we call that. He starts one way to get the flow of the coverage team down to one side, and then he cuts it back, and they have the blockers set up. So it's a good job by Southern. Again, they've got good field position on their own 39-yard line. Hopefully, UNK's defense can continue to play well. Missouri Southern with those two scores, but uh, uh, just 82 yards on 14 plays so far. Four for eight passing for Sampson. Got their big offensive off, uh, formation in again. They they actually bring in. It looks like they bring in a second offensive line or a, a sixth offensive lineman, and they have two tight ends. Uh, looks like they're just trying to pound the football a little bit there. I mean. Uh, they're not a proficient run team. Mm -hmm. They try to run the football, but they, it's not their, their uh, strength by any stretch of the imagination. They're pretty good at throwing it. 39 rushing yards for Missouri Southern. That's just short of their per game average. So certainly making that more of a priority today than yep. typical. That carry goes nowhere, and it's third down and seven for the Lions. Good play by C.J. Sinai. Been good having him back out there. Stick around. We'll break everything down for you at halftime. Your halftime show will be brought to you by Cunningham's. Check out Cunningham's, both on the bricks and on the lake here in Kearney. Big third down here. If you, UNK can get the stop, they should have a chance to get good field position again. Sampson in the shotgun, and he wants to throw as a flag flies. It's caught for a first down. Completed along the right sideline. Akeem Gilmore, he was the Wildcat quarterback who had the big run a couple of drives ago and moves the sticks here pending the flag. Looks like UNK might have lined up offsides on that play. Yeah, it was Campbell Packabush, the reserve defensive lineman, redshirt freshman from Littleton, Colorado, that lined up offsides. So that penalty declined, and the Lions are in Loper territory at the 49. Now two for four on third down, Missouri Southern. Swing pass to the back, that's Bethune. David Bethune gets six yards on first down. Just his second catch of the season. His other grab was a 68-yard touchdown score against Northwest Missouri State. Yeah, he was able to split the safeties on that play. That was early on in the game, and, uh, uh, you know, he's got a lot of speed, pretty shifty. He was the kick returner as well. Sampson hands off and spinning forward for a couple of yards as Javion Marlowe sets up third down and two. Will the Lions stay on the ground here? Again, they entered this game just 84 rushing yards through two games. Yeah. But seems to be a focal point of Atiba Bradley's squad here this afternoon. I wouldn't be surprised to see a little play action here to try to get a quick uh, throw out to the flat for the first down. With the fullback in there, it is play action. Sampson looking the opposite way. Hit as he throws. It's incomplete, and there's no flags. Good job by you in case defense there. They recognized that. And... 
believe that, that just was seems Zach to be the new, Sorry about that. That seems to be the uh, the Missouri Southern uh, style. Uh, they try to show you run run formations and try to throw it. It was Zach Schlager who came in, laid that lick on Sampson, the quarterback. Trey O'Gwin in coverage. And here is the punt unit. Mitchell Corey, the freshman from Independence, Missouri, trying to pin the Lopers deep. He's been a really strong punter. In eight punts, half of them have been downed inside of the 20. This one's on the way towards that. Schwong fair catches it at the 12-yard line. Lopers get the ball trailing by just two points. A score here, and UNK would be able to take the lead in the second quarter. Yeah, this could be a, a really big drive for UNK if they can come out of here, change field position and uh, at the very minimum, and then hopefully score some points to go ahead. A Nebraska Kearney defense did yield one-third down conversion, but stiffened up once the Lions got into Loper territory. UNK's defense has been pretty pretty forceful this year, uh, this uh, in the last two games for sure. And even in the second half of the first game against the University of Central Oklahoma, they've played well. Joseph is the back in the pistol, and he gets the carry on first down. Goes between the tackles for two, maybe three. Second down and seven. It's been a balanced attack offensively for Nebraska Kearney through a couple of games. 190 pass yards per game, 140 rush. But of those uh, 140 rushing yards on average, really dominated by T.J. Davis. More than half of the rush yards to the quarterback. He had run for 176 yards and three scores coming into this game. Now trying to get the running backs more involved today. And they need to do that. It just uh, That way it keeps teams from just teeing off on TJ all the time. The run pass option. They get it outside. That's Luke Fletcher hauling it in. Or my mistake, Anthony Sabatka. Congratulations to the Hastings St. Cecilia product. Sabatka gets his first catch of the season. The 6'1", 220-pounder sets up third down and a yard. That's good to see Anthony make a catch like that. He's... Uh, he has worked his way into playing time and uh, that was big now we can get a first down here hopefully I was granted a special scholarship during the offseason for his work and now he motions here's Joseph Joseph has the first down and stumbles forward for about three good tackle on the play by Colton Bass the sophomore linebacker for the Lions Actually, coming up uh, from the secondary, Irvin Hawkins. The free safety got him by the ankles. Otherwise, Joseph had a chance to bust it outside. The two safeties, Hawkins and uh, Jabril for Missouri Southern, are really excellent football players. They get involved in the run game just as much as they do in the pass game. Sticking with that uh, running back run game, and Nick Cruz cleans up Joseph after just a yard. You, know, you worry about uh, quarterback health when you have a running quarterback, and uh, Davis carrying the football has not been part of the game plan so far through nearly one half of football. It's been a running back run game or throwing it. I would agree with that, I, and, uh, and, and I don't think anything's wrong with TJ. It's just that it's good to see them kind of get other people involved because when he does carry the ball, he makes a difference. Lots of motion for Reggie Anderson. It's a decoy. They throw over the middle, complete to Cole Brown, and a really spectacular open field tackle. Peyton McKee, who had the interception earlier, cleans up Brown after just a few-yard gain. Yeah, that looked like it had a chance to go for quite a few yards there. A really nice design by Colby Ellis and company, but... I mean, make it play in open field, yeah. and that slows things down. On one-on-one -on -one tackle, you trust your wide receiver in space there, but the nickelback made the stop. So it's third down and six. Again, no timeouts left for the Lopers, so they must get the right personnel on play call, and they can't stop it. There's five seconds on the play clock. Davis wanted to run. He got corralled in a hurry. Colton Winder comes in for his first sack of the season, and it sends Davis back to the 20, a loss of seven on third and six. 
kind of a situation, I think, where uh, UNK is having to rotate some offensive linemen, and I think uh, they came with an edge blitz from a wide position, and I don't think the tackle was able to just get out there and get it. That's Hunter Hayes playing right tackle, who is an All-American candidate at guard. At guard, exactly. But Asafe Fatou, who returned for this game today, the team was really excited to get him back, has not returned after limping off of the field. Now Hunter Kraus gets off this wobbling punt, takes a high loper bounce, and keeps going to the 38. So that is a 42-yard punt for Hunter Kraus into the wind. And it sets up first and 10 for Missouri Southern. They have two timeouts and 3.11 on the clock as they try to build on, on their two-point cushion. Today's broadcast is brought to you in part by Zollner Ford Lincoln. And looking for a vehicle in southeast Nebraska, look up Zollner Ford Lincoln in Beatrice. Well, hopefully UNK's defense can rise to the occasion again. They've done a good job so far, especially with Missouri Southern going into the wind a little bit. Uh, if they can keep them out of the end zone or keep, keep them from getting any points, uh, you're going at half, you might be trailing by two, but, but you're showing the last two series that you're doing some pretty good things. That carry to Anthodius Ashley. Just a couple yards at second down and eight. A conservative play call to start off this drive. Missouri Southern really leaning into the running attack. They're trying to. Uh, it hasn't really uh, amounted to a whole lot, but it does. Uh, it keeps the defense honest for sure. They give again, and once again, the Lopers have it dialed up. Tell, Tell Spees. Spees. He's having a day. <laughs> he ate Ashley alive and sent him back for a loss. Big third down here. If we can get a shot off and get the ball back, we might have some decent field position to do something. <clears throat> Jameer Jones was also back there, the defensive back, and he helps uh, Spees celebrate. Tell had a sack earlier, so he's already at four tackles for loss this year. Third down and 11. Huge opportunity for the UNK defense. They're bringing Willis on a blitz. It's screen. a screen play. Great play. And a terrific tackle. That's Devin, Devin. Guja, the junior out of California. One-on-one -on -one play, and he made it, sending Ashley to the turf. It seems like UNK's done a great job this week of preparing for the, for the Missouri Southern offensive attack. They seem to have things sniffed out pretty well, other than that Wildcat play back in the second series that Missouri Southern had. Uh, they've pretty much shut down everything Missouri Southern's trying to do. Zane Schwong, see if he is poised for a, a return <clears throat> opportunity. Again, the Lopers out of timeouts, not able to stop the clock to preserve some time of possession. And Missouri Southern takes it all the way to zero before burning their second timeout. The Lopers have 63 seconds to work with, trailing by two here on the Aurora Cooperative scoreboard towards the end of the first half. Order your dream vehicle today with no money down. If you don't love it when it arrives, leave it with absolutely no obligation. We are professional grade at Central Nebraska's premier GM dealer. Midway Chevrolet, Buick GMC and Kearney, or think midway.com slash GM. NCN Sports is brought to you by Currency. Visit GoCurrency.com for details. By Central Nebraska Orthopedics, dedicated to the motion of life. And by Region 4 Behavioral Health, quality mental health and substance abuse services. That's the Missouri Southern Lion team. One and one, they really uh, have gotten used to playing close games and they might have another one on hand here. A one score loss against Northwest Missouri State, the traditional power in this conference to open up the season. Then a one score win over Washburn in Topeka. The first win in Topeka for Missouri Southern since 1995. They got that done on the road, trying to do it again today. 
Right, and you and K's defense has certainly uh, risen to the occasion. They've played extremely well in this uh, in this game, and given the offense, this is complimentary football. You give the offense a, a chance to do something with it, and uh, even though UNK doesn't have any timeouts left, they do have the wind of their back. Hopefully, they can get a couple of plays, uh, a couple of chunk plays, and uh, uh, maybe give themselves a chance to put some points on the board right before the half. Uh, Missouri Southern likely to get, the, I believe they are set to get that football to start the third quarter. Might explain some of the conservative play calling on that previous possession. And TJ Davis seems confused with 15 seconds on the play clock here. Has Schwong with him in the backfield. Davis steps up in the pocket. He's trying to make a play with his legs. And gets... A few yards on first down, up to the 24. I'll give him six. It's second down and four, and the clock stops at 49 seconds. That's experience t talking mm -hmm. right there. That was smart by TJ, just pulling it down and then understanding that you got to get out of bounds and get that clock stopped. Four wide receiver formation for second and five. The senior quarterback running out of time and couldn't find anybody downfield. The sack comes in. That's courtesy of Jermaine Young Jr., the 6'2 sophomore out of Chicago for the Lions. Well, now UNK probably is just going to take as much clock as they possibly can here and go in at half, maybe just down by two points. Um, I, don't, I didn't really see if there was anybody open downfield. It looked like uh, TJ had some time early, but he needs to get rid of that ball, and uh, it was a good rush. He got eight, eight Throws in Throws over the middle, gets it to Foster. They aren't going to half without maybe getting one more snap yeah. in it. Completion to Foster. See if the Lopers can get up and spike it. No, they're just going to take it to half. They do get some momentum <laughs> with that completion, some confidence. After a slow start to this ball game for UNK, trailing nine zip, they do get the second quarter touchdown to cut it to a two-point deficit. UNK looks to regroup at halftime before coming out to, for the third quarter. We'll stay here uh, during this halftime. We'll have our halftime show, and part of that will include a look closer at the UNK offensive coordinator, Colby Ellis. He's one of many in a long line of Ellis coaches We'll learn about his family background and his designs for the UNK offense when we return to Foster Field. Anything for the floor, O Street Carpet has it and more. From little feet to little paws, to updates and overhauls. From soft and cozy to durable and resilient. From something that blends in or something that's different. From DIY to custom install, O Street Carpet can help you with it all. Whatever your needs are for the floor, O Street Carpet has it and more. Women have a 1 in 8 chance for developing breast cancer. Early detection makes a difference. Beatrice Community Hospital's Imaging Center can help with the latest technology. From screening with 3D mammography, breast MRI, breast ultrasound, and breast biopsy. All services conveniently located in the BCH's Imaging Center. Schedule your screening today. Incredible care, incredibly close. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. NCN Sports is brought to you by Midway Auto. For your next vehicle, go to thinkmidway.com and by News Channel Nebraska. Follow us on Twitter at NCN Sports for more highlights, interviews, rankings, and our full schedule. NCN Sports is brought to you by Western Oil, your first and last stop to and from the game, by USA Pharmacy, dedicated to the well-being of all our customers, and by Zollner Ford Lincoln, proud to be your local Ford and Lincoln dealer. 
champions are crowned each year in Lincoln. All of us at Visit Lincoln welcome the athletes, families, and fans from across Nebraska to our community. When the final whistle blows and the game ends, make sure to discover how Lincoln can make your stay even more memorable. Stop by the Visitor Center at 7th and P in the Haymarket or visit us on the web at lincoln.org. Visit Lincoln is a proud supporter of high school athletics. Order your dream vehicle today with no money down. If you don't love it when it arrives, leave it with absolutely no obligation. We are professional grade at Central Nebraska's premier GM dealer. Midway Chevrolet, Buick GMC and Kearney or think midway.com slash GM. It's a new season and a new place and a new role for Colby Ellis. But it's anything but new to see an Ellis on a football field with a play sheet in his hands. Well, going into coaching it kind of all started with, with my family. You know, my great grandparents were, were coaches um, in the state of Oklahoma, um, whether it be basketball, football. Um, and then, of course, my dad. My dad is a longtime high school coach in Oklahoma for 30 plus years. The Ellis family made stops across Oklahoma in towns like Weatherford, Elk City, Pawnee, and Tonkawa as David Ellis ascended the high school coaching ladder. Along the way, Colby fell in love with the game. With three brothers and other careers, he's keeping the line of Ellis coaches alive. It's just something I've always wanted to do. You know, that was my passion, um, all the way from playing and being around the game and being in the locker room and the coaches' offices. That's just, uh, I mean, that's just always been my passion. The first person to give him an assistant coaching job was Ryan Held in 2014, then the head coach at Northeastern Oklahoma A&M. The pair intersected again at Nebraska in 2018 and 19, and again at North Alabama last year. We've had a great relationship, obviously. We're, we're going on knowing each other for 10 plus years. It's been, it's been really good. We work well together. It's Ellis's first time as a permanent offensive coordinator and first time as quarterback's coach. He's made a positive impact on senior All-American quarterback T.J. Davis. He's going to tell you exactly what it is, and that's what I love about him. Um, he keep me honest. He keep, he keep all of us on our toes. Uh, he likes to say sometimes you might not like me, but that's okay. Uh, I definitely think that all of us have had our fair shares of him getting on us, but at the end of the day, um, it's going to make us better, and we understand that. Through two games, the Ellis-led offense has averaged 330 yards per game and put Davis in place to score six touchdowns. Whatever the stats end up being this season, Ellis knows from decades of family wisdom, the sport's about more than the results. You're teaching life lessons out here. With that, we're going through adversity and different perseverance. And that's something my dad taught me at a very, very young age. So um, pushing these guys to be better off the field, get their degree, um, you know, and just to be good husband and fathers as well. In Kearney, Michael Shively, News Channel, Nebraska. Whether we're talking commercial or residential plumbing, Lamo Plumbing is the place you call. Lamo provides 24-hour emergency service as well. Call them if you get in a tight spot. And as for their retail items, well, you got to check out some of their faucets, some of their kitchen items, and some of their bathroom items like their onyx showers. And hey, say you've got a digging job, you call Lamo Plumbing for that too. They've added a full-time crew for you, doing backhoe, trenching, and sewer work. Take that digging job off your list and have Lamo do it for you. That's Lamo Plumbing in Beatrice, now at their new location on North 7th Street in Beatrice. NCN Sports is sponsored by Husker Rehab, treating the cause of the pain, not just the symptoms. Columbus Motor Company, where you'll find one low price, plain and simple, always. And by Claybaugh Pharmacy, your locally owned hometown pharmacy. Our halftime show, brought to you by Cunningham's Journal on the Bricks, on 23rd Street in downtown Kearney. From the moment something didn't feel quite right, to that ambulance arriving at your door. From the immediate diagnosis, to the surgery that followed, to the long list of lifestyle changes, and that family gathering that everyone always talked about, but for whatever reason kept getting postponed, to the moment you sat back and realized how grateful you are for everything you have. We've been here for you, just around the corner. Columbus Community Hospital. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. 
confident about the used vehicle you're buying with Midway Certified Pre-Owned. Our lowest hassle-free prices every day on a great selection of Midway Certified Pre-Owned Fords, Hondas, Toyotas, and more. Available now at your Midway Auto dealership locations in Kearney or online at thinkmidway.com. UNK is a place where quality education meets hands-on learning, and going the extra mile gets rewarded. It's a place where you can put yourself out there, reach your goals, and set new ones you never thought possible. Be yourself, but develop the best version of you. Let us show you what you're made of. Be blue. Be gold. Be bold. Apply now to the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Learn more at unk.edu. My dad's addiction and death from overdosing on opioids has taught me it's likely that everybody knows somebody who is struggling with this very problem. Losing my mentor, my best friend. He took one pill too many that ultimately killed him. you're proud of the community you live in, taking care of the people in it isn't a job, it's an honor. At John Henry's, we take pride in being relied upon by the great people of Lincoln and the surrounding areas. A hard day's work means a happy customer, and making happy customers has been our goal all along. A team of expert plumbers, drain specialists, and HVAC professionals, dedicated to finding solutions for our customers. Because for us, a successful day ends with a handshake and a smile. John Henry's, our family serving yours. NCN Sports is brought to you by Tom Dinsdale Auto. Celebrating 20 years, Tom Dinsdale Auto is proud to be community driven. And by News Channel Nebraska. Check us out on Twitter at NCN Sports. For over 40 years, Claybaugh Pharmacy has been your trusted, family owned, full service pharmacy. We provide traditional medical options, medical equipment, immunizations, and over the counter products. We take pride in going above and beyond to improve the health of our community. And to ensure you have a seamless experience, manage your profile and refills with a touch of the finger from home. Claybaugh Pharmacy in downtown Beatrice, your hometown family owned pharmacy. At Zollner Ford, come and see our great selection of new Ford vehicles. Whether you're looking to buy new or you need a car serviced, it's our pleasure to assist you. Our online website makes shopping even easier. Browse our massive inventory of vehicles or schedule your next maintenance appointment. We even offer drop-off and pickup services. Stop by today or visit us online at zollnerofbeatrice.com. It all started long ago with cattle in mind, and it's still the major focus today of Powder River Livestock Handling Equipment and your friends at Valley Vet Supply in Marysville. They want to provide you with the best equipment. That's why they sell Powder River. It truly does stand the test of time. Powder River is a name you can trust. From cattle handling systems to gates and feeders, Powder River makes equipment for life. Come see for yourself at Valley Vet Supply on Highway 36 in Marysville. UNK is a place where quality education meets hands-on learning, and going the extra mile gets rewarded. It's a place where you can put yourself out there, reach your goals, and set new ones you never thought possible. Be yourself, but develop the best version of you. Let us show you what you're made of. Be blue. Be gold. Be bold. Apply now to the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Learn more at unk.edu. Landmark Implement is your local authorized John Deere dealer. Landmark's trained and certified sales staff will help you find the right equipment for your needs. All backed by Landmark's extensive parts and service network. Whether it's a tractor, planter, combine, lawn and garden tractor, or gator, every piece of equipment in our inventory is ready to work hard for your operation. Landmark's team works together to make sure everything that is sold meets their quality standards. Stop by your local Landmark Implement or learn more at LandmarkImp.com to experience the Landmark difference. Some jobs are hard work, long hours, busy days, late nights. But there's something in us that keeps us going when we know what we're doing is making a difference in someone's life. Because it's the hardest jobs that are the most important and that pride you feel. 
makes it more than worth the effort. NPPD, powering our state, empowering your life. Michael Shively, Scott Hoffman with you. Beautiful day for football here in central Nebraska. Now the Nebraska Kearney Lopers are fighting hard. To some miscues early. They have seem to have righted things some in the second quarter and cut it to a two-point deficit, 9-7, to seven, on the Aurora Cooperative scoreboard in favor of Missouri Southern. Let's see how that first half developed. Here your halftime show brought to you by Cunningham's Journal on the Bricks on 23rd Street in downtown Kearney. Here's a Davis, and this was a big play early in this game, the opening drive for the Lopers, and Sev Foster had that football, then lost it. It was picked off by Peyton McKee, and it ends up being three points for Missouri Southern on their opening possession. So a costly interception for the Lopers. Later on in the first quarter, a really solid drive by Missouri Southern, set up by an enormous Wildcat run. And then Luke Sampson steps up in the pocket to find Jaden Stoshak for the touchdown. Nebraska Kearney going back at it, and this time it is squeezed in by Sev Foster, trying to get some points in the second quarter, and they can't do it to open up the period. Gabe Hines pulls the 40-yard kick wide to the left. But the Lopers get the stop defensively. And on offense, they find Zane Schwong out of the backfield for a solid 16-yard pickup, setting up first and goal from the three. And Tamikis Napier takes it in for six. The point after was good. That cut it to just a two-point game heading to halftime. Well, some missed opportunities for Nebraska Kearney. Some missed cues, but just down two. Uh, chance to really make an interesting game of this in the second half. Yeah, I think so. Now, uh, you know, we were talking at halftime here. Uh, Missouri Southern is going to get the ball. They should get the ball to start the third quarter, but hopefully UNK puts them into the wind and the defense continues to play like they have and, and we get a good, uh, some good field position and can get a score on the board and get ahead in this game. And then I think you know, it, it appears to me like we're a pretty good football team here, uh, in in two evenly matched game, uh, two evenly matched teams. But it seems like Carney's got a little bit of an edge if we can just kind of take care of business and and uh, get ahead of this game. I think we got a good chance to win it. Checking on your MIAA scoreboard, only one other game in action so far. This one just underway, a 1 o'clock kickoff. Central Missouri taking on Pitt State, two of the top teams in this league. It is a home game for the Mules of Central Missouri. They got the ball first, and they put seven points on the board. So Pitt State, the reigning conference champs, number three in the national polls, find themselves trailing the Mules, led by former UNK head coach Josh Lamberson. That UCM team not messing around here in 2023. Every other game to kick off, either there's one 2 o'clock kick, the rest are night kicks and the MIAA. The score on the Midway Auto Dealership scoreboard is 9-7 in favor of Missouri Southern. And the Lions will get the football, UNK, to kick it off when we come back to Cope Stadium in Kearney. Tom Dinsdale Automotive is celebrating our 20th anniversary. 20 years of building lifelong relationships. 20 years of providing superior customer experiences. 20 years of supporting the community. For 20 years, we've been building trust and loyalty by treating every customer like family on every visit. We're proud to serve Grand Island and the surrounding areas. Thank you for 20 great years, and we look forward to many more. Help us celebrate 20 years of service. Stop in today. <laughs> that is literally the funniest thing ever. And then I said. <laughs> it wasn't. But this guy could use a win. Even if it's not as big of a win as I get with free Kasasa Cash checking. Kasasa Cash pays me a really high rate and refunds ATM withdrawal fees nationwide. So I feel like a queen. Has a mega bank ever made you feel that way? Or is it more like this guy? Take back banking with Kasasa Cash. Get Kasasa checking at Liberty First Credit Union. 
At Nebraska Orthopedic Center, they provide comprehensive orthopedic health care. Their physicians are highly skilled in all areas of orthopedic and sports medicine, including spine surgery, foot and ankle, hand and upper extremities, fracture care, and total joint replacement. Their expertise includes the medical management of injuries through physical and rehabilitative methods or surgical intervention. To schedule an appointment or to learn more about Nebraska Orthopedic Center and their family of 25 physicians, go online to NebraskaOrtho.com. That's NebraskaOrtho.com. Nebraska Orthopedic Center is your healing destination. Let your next adventure take flight in Sarpy County, Nebraska for some high-flying fun. Legendary family adventures. Up this world shopping. Star-studded evenings and award-winning experiences. Our flights are never canceled. Stay, play, and plan your getaway at GoSarpy.com. for the floor, O Street Carpet has it and more. From little feet to little paws, to updates and overhauls. From soft and cozy to durable and resilient. From something that blends in or something that's different. From DIY to custom install, O Street Carpet can help you with it all. Whatever your needs are for the floor, O Street Carpet has it and more. confident about the used vehicle you're buying with Midway Certified Pre-Owned. Our lowest tassel-free prices every day on a great selection of Midway Certified Pre-Owned Fords, Hondas, Toyotas, and more. Available now at your Midway Auto dealership locations in Kearney or online at thinkmidway.com. Well, some folks are uh out uh, enjoying their tailgates at halftime. I was just walking up the back of the press box, and uh, it looks like there's no folks here. Uh, th those stands were full and will be full again, but right now you got to go get your grub, uh, have a <laughs> beverage there at halftime before uh, heading out for the start of the second half. Uh, meanwhile, UNK went to the locker room refocused and hoping for a clean third quarter with a big opportunity to take the lead, trailing by two at the break. One of the things that uh, UNK's coaching staff has done the previous two games that's been very good is that uh, they've seemed to make some really excellent halftime adjustments. So hopefully they've done that again. And uh, UNK's defense has been playing solid. Hopefully they continue to do that and the offense can pick things up a little bit and, and uh, make something happen here in the second half. Gabe Hines will kick off. Oh, no Kyle failing out there today. Let's see if we can get an update for you on him at some point. But Gabe Hines boots this one away and gets it into the end zone for a touchback. So the Lopers defense will come out. Pretty good showing in half number one for that unit. So take away the one big rush. It was a huge gain on the ground for Akeem Gilmore of 23, but take that away, and, and really, that was a solid defensive half, holding Moso to 98 yards on 23 plays. Yeah, it's uh, UNK defense has really done a good job. That's just uh, 75 yards of offense when you take away that Wildcat run. Yeah, exactly, and... Uh, 
you know, they've done a great job of just kind of shutting things off, and, and they've, they're well prepared. We'll see what Missouri Southern does to start the second half here. Yeah, I expect the Lions to add some new wrinkles in there, including this rollout pass and a 16-yard pickup on first down. And no surprise, they go right to Jaden Stoshak, one of the top wide receivers in the league so far this season. The senior from Jacksonville, Florida, has his third grab of the game. He definitely is Stanton's number one target. There's no doubt about it. And, and they do a good job of finding him. Actually, his fourth catch now up to nearly 50 yards and a touchdown. Back to the ground game, bouncing it outside and finding a hole. The Lions get it out to Javion Marlowe, and Marlowe runs forward across midfield for a first down and a gain of 11. Looked like the defensive end kind of did. Uh, I'm not going to say got held, but uh, it was hard for him to get off of that block. <laughs> and uh, had he been able to maintain leverage on that, I don't think that ball would have popped back like that. Jabia Talong makes the stop from the nickelback spot. Everybody on the right side of the field, the wide side. And it's a draw play. Good lick applied by the linebacker for the Lopers, but running right through it is Marlowe. Marlowe becoming the featured back in this game was the third stringer entering it. He's a nifty little back. He makes good cuts, and he was able to cut that back. Now, Stanton is out, um, so I would expect to see uh, Gilmore, maybe a quarterback in that Wildcat look again. And that is the case. It was a rush for 23 yards in the first half out of this formation. Bethune comes in motion. Same they play. fake to him. And not as much room that time for Akeem Gilmore. But it is enough to move the chains. A pickup of three on second and two. Good job by you and Kay recognizing that. But uh, unfortunately, it was a short yardage situation. So he was able to get the first down. But um... Luke Sampson comes back out now. This is your third quarter, which is brought to you by Husker Rehab, treating the cause of pain, not just the symptoms. Sampson to pass. Throws to the right side and gets a medium gain. Able to get that out to Dimitri Lloyd. The tight end with his first grab of the year out of Fort Smith, Arkansas. David Lilly cleans him up. Good job by David Lilly. But Jason a hold. Did not see that flag. That's good. Got a holding call. It's going to move him back a little bit. Didn't catch the number, but that's a critical penalty when you're right on the edge of field goal range. And they have a good kicker, so this is a big penalty for UNK or for Missouri Southern against UNK. Makes it first down and 20. That football will be placed at the 47. Missouri Southern had been moving the ball quite smoothly after starting this drive at the 25. Swing out to the left. Shedding a couple tacklers, but uh, then C.J. Sanui comes in to unload the blow on Gilmore. That's a great job by that interior lineman, C.J. Sanui, coming all the way out to the numbers and making that, cleaning up that tackle. It was a good job by the defensive backs to slow things down, but uh, when you got a 300-pound guy running <laughs> that fast to get out on the numbers and making 310, that 310, 310 pounds, and he's one of many from Pago Pago American Samoa out there on the field today. Uh, several Lions also Samoan, and, and Stephen Bettina has that ancestry also. Good strike uh, to the slot receiver. He inaccurately signals for a first down, uh, but a good grab for Dimitri Lloyd, his second yeah, this possession. That was a big play right there. That puts him in pretty good field position. Third down and two. And third down. Nebraska Kearney trying to get the fans into it ahead of a, an enormous snap early in the third quarter. Already a four minute long drive. It's gone 47 yards on six plays for Missouri Southern. They're nursing a two-point lead on the Midway Auto Dealership scoreboard. One second on the play clock, and they call timeout. 
It was going to be close, but Atiba Bradley calls timeout ahead of this third down and one snap. We'll step aside the big play when we return. Plumbing needs attention? Trust the experts at John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, Air, and Electrical. No matter the size of the job, John Henry's brings extensive expertise to handle everything your home's plumbing system requires. So whether your drain is clogged, your water heater needs an upgrade, or you want to remodel your kitchen or bathroom, we're here for you. Reach out to us today and discover why, since 1996, we've proudly served families as the most reliable plumbing company in the Lincoln area. John Henry's, our family, serving yours since 1996. Feel confident about the used vehicle you're buying with Midway Certified Pre-Owned. Our lowest hassle-free prices every day on a great selection of Midway Certified Pre-Owned Fords, Hondas, Toyotas, and more. Available now at your Midway Auto dealership locations in Kearney or online at thinkmidway.com. NCN Sports is brought to you by Currency. Visit GoCurrency.com for details. By Central Nebraska Orthopedics, dedicated to the motion of life. And by Region 4 Behavioral Health, quality mental health and substance abuse services. Third down and just over a yard to go for Missouri Southern. They're at the UNK 28 and an important snap early in the third quarter. Trying to continue a drive that's gone six plays and netted 47 yards. Out of the timeout, Sampson the quick pass. It's caught and the stick by Talong is right at the marker and it's just enough to move the chains. The quick pass to Ezekiel Lang, a six foot three, 205 pound wide out, and it's enough to get the first down. That was a pretty good call. They were in their jumbo package and they had everybody bunched up inside there and you just put the guy one on one and all he needs is one yard. So uh, easy play for Southern. So they get a new set of downs in UNK territory and handoff have a big gash Cleaned up by Trey Gwynn, but not before Marlowe explodes to the 13-yard line for a gain of 13. Right up the middle. And now the Lions are going fast on play action. It's nearly intercepted. Joko Willis got his hands on that football, and he was already picturing himself in the end zone when it slipped through his fingers. So he would have run a long ways with that. See this replay. Oh, what a play. Uh, he had a lot of green grass in front of him. Unfortunately, I think he saw that too. So <laughs> Ezekiel Lang was open on the slant if the ball was on target, and it would have been six. So Willis gets the pass break up to four second down and ten. UNK hoping to hold the Lions to a field goal try. Stoshak's back in. I would expect him to try to find him. And they motion the big-bodied Lang there. Over the middle, Lang drops it. Well, that was fortunate. Run the slant consecutive plays with Lang going to him both times. Neither of them converts. Big third down again. Missouri Southern three for seven, including a conversion this drive. They can get a first down at the three. Uh, Samson. UNK. UNK's defense needs to step up here and make a big play. Throw over the middle, and it's a good throw. Caught. I'm not sure he That's, got the first down. It's fourth and one. It'll be interesting to see what they do here. It's fourth down. Deontay Campbell, the 6'5", 235-pound junior tight end, used all of his frame to catch that football. And, put right on him by Luke Sampson. It's fourth down and less than a yard. Everybody on the line of scrimmage or next to the quarterback. And it's Gilbert under center. He's trying to draw the defense off and able to dive his body forward to move the chains and a fourth down conversion. The first fourth down attempt of the season for Missouri Southern and it sets up first down and goal from inside the three. A lot of people running that 
little scheme on very short yardage situations nowadays, and uh, it's it's almost like uh, 1910 football. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's pushing a lot the of, guy from behind. Not a lot of imagination in that play, but a lot of people are doing it, and it's pretty effective. They do like to put Gilbert in there at quarterback the third time he's taken a snap today. But now it's Luke Sampson who has a touchdown pass so far on his ledger. And on first down and goal, handoff right up the middle, and that's an easy score for the Lions. It's Javion Marlowe, the Vanderbilt transfer, who finds six points for Moso. That's an impressive drive by Missouri Southern because, uh, you know, the thing we talked about right at the beginning of the third quarter was UNK needed to get a good stop, have the wind of their back, and put some points on the board and get ahead in this game. And, and Missouri Southern was able to drive that ball and, and stick things in the end zone against a, U, a good UNK defense. Drake Reese trying to cap off this drive. He did have one blocked, and this one's blocked again. Tell Spees, he breaks through here. for the second time, and the ball's still loose. The Lopers pick it up and are brought down. No, the ball is still free. A flag flies, and running the other way for a possible two points is Joko Willis. We'll see. see that flag is. I'm sure there was a <laughs> illegal block or something, but... Regardless, that is the second blocked extra point by Tell Spees this game. Good and the job. third point after try miss by Drake Reese, who has otherwise been perfect. <laughs> He's nailed three 40-plus yard field goals this season, but that's his third missed point after. Well, obviously, uh, the protection up inside mm -hmm. is there's something, there's something wrong there for Missouri Southern because we split them twice now and blocked the PATs. We'll get this call. Illegal forward pass. So it just works like a block there yeah. and, and must have done a forward lateral there to keep it alive. <laughs> we'll get a look at it. Oh, perfect job by Tell Spees. And I think he was down when he took he, this anyway. Yeah, I believe he yeah, was probably well, That down should have been there. down there. Yeah, he did throw it forward. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so it wouldn't have mattered well, either way. Make the okay. official make the call on that one. It's an eight-point game, a one-touchdown game with 8.26 to go in the third quarter. Uh, UNK, I mean, that, that, it's still a one-possession a one game here. So if we, can, if we can punch something in the end zone, we still got a pretty good chance here. Well, Lopers get the ball next. For over 40 years, Claybaugh Pharmacy has been your trusted, family-owned, full-service pharmacy. We provide traditional medical options, medical equipment, immunizations, and over-the-counter products. We take pride in going above and beyond to improve the health of our community. And to ensure you have a seamless experience, manage your profile and refills with a touch of the finger from home. Claybaugh Pharmacy in downtown Beatrice, your hometown family-owned pharmacy. NCN Sports is brought to you by Currency. Visit GoCurrency.com for details. By Central Nebraska Orthopedics, dedicated to the motion of life. And by Region 4 Behavioral Health, quality mental health and substance abuse services. Michael Shively, Scott Hoffman with you. Third quarter action following a 13 play, 75 yard drive. Missouri, Missouri Southern gets six points. They don't get seven. And so a couple of touchdowns where they only get six means they have 15 total points. And the Lopers are down just one touchdown and a two point conversion. Should be returnable. It's Connors. Jaquan Connors to the 30 and patiently maneuvers forward to the 31-yard line. Pretty and here field. comes T.J. Davis and the offense. And a good first half for Davis, 13 of 17 for 127 yards. He did have that one pick, but if you're just joining us, it was a bobble situation where the ball bounced off of the a wide receiver who had a chance to catch it and into the arms of the defender. So one that you can't fault Davis for too much. Take that away, 13, or it would have been a 14 of 17 for about 140 yards. 
Now, the run game for Davis hasn't been too frequent. Six carries, two of those sacks. And he wants to throw on first down, looks to his second progression, and able to complete the ball to Cole Brown. Cole was able to pick up, I mean, with the, the pass went for two yards. It could have been a five-yard play, but uh, Cole's trying to make something happen. I mean, it just that's unfortunate that he lost a couple yards, but had he been able to slip that tackle, he might have been able to get a first down out of that. Second catch for Brown today, one of nine targets to catch a football in the first half for the Lopers. Now that a lot of is spreading the ball around. Zorian Stanton and Sev Foster lead the way with three catches apiece. Davis looks frustrated, and they're going to have to burn a timeout. The Lopers took all three timeouts on offense in the first half, and they burn a timeout not even five minutes into the second half. We'll catch our breath with them. Seven and a half remaining in the third quarter on the Aurora Cooperative scoreboard. For over 40 years, Claybaugh Pharmacy has been your trusted, family-owned, full-service pharmacy. We provide traditional medical options, medical equipment, immunizations, and over-the-counter products. We take pride in going above and beyond to improve the health of our community. And to ensure you have a seamless experience, manage your profile and refills with a touch of the finger from home. Claybaugh Pharmacy in downtown Beatrice, your hometown family-owned pharmacy. Order your dream vehicle today with no money down. If you don't love it when it arrives, leave it with absolutely no obligation. We are professional grade at Central Nebraska's premier GM dealer. Midway Chevrolet, Buick GMC and Kearney or think midway.com slash GM. Oh, Ryan Held certainly frustrated He's had to use four timeouts on offense in this game, including one here in the second play of a drive, just didn't have the right setup. Now they're ready for it on second down and eight, a low snap, shovel pass, and Jamal Joseph has some daylight. He's just short of the line to gain. And he did hold on to the football, he's down. Third down and about a yard remaining. Well, it looked like from up here that he got that first down. I'm kind of surprised by that spot. But uh, UNK's got to got to capitalize on this third and one here. Under center, Davis. He rushes forward, and a flag comes out. I think there was a legal procedure. I'm not sure everybody was set. And that would be a, a demoralizing sequence for Nebraska Kearney. Set up third and six, six instead of third and one. Exactly right, Scott. Not everybody was set. And so the Lopers commit another penalty. That is their sixth penalty this game. Today's broadcast brought to you in part by Midway Auto. For your next vehicle, go to thinkmidway.com. <sighs> Got to convert here. Just been a lot of unforced errors by you and K. Davis trying to run for it, and he doesn't have the room. Couldn't tell if that was a called quarterback run or if he he just went for it himself. Was able to get just two yards out of it, and it's fourth down and four. Sure looked like maybe that was a called quarterback draw, but uh, well defended by Missouri Southern. So the Lopers, mm, that's a gut punch there. It really is. I mean, uh, you, you know, you have opportunities. You had to take burn a time out right away and then come up short on a third and one, and you, and you can't get everybody set. I mean, it's uh, just got to fix some little things here. Needing a good punt from Hunter Krause, the senior from Sargent, Nebraska, unloads. That's a spiraling kick taken from the 14. Trying to get around to the edges, Stoshak. Stoshak still running, and he's flipped up at the 20 as a flag comes in. Look like a block in the back, so that'll push him back even farther. So again, UNK's got to capitalize here. They've got they should be able to shut them off and get good field position and do something with it. Now here's another look at that return. As we're waiting for the announcement on the penalty. Right there. And that was definitely a block in the back. Forty seven. 
Yeah, so that'll be Riley Hammonds, who's guilty, the true freshman out of Sulphur Springs, Texas. Meanwhile, Hunter Push getting his shoulder massaged. They can now afford to have another offensive lineman banged up. They, it's been just a patchwork all year so far, and that's that's playing a big role in, in uh, terms of offensive production because you just never have any continuity. Those five guys have to get used to playing with each other, and when you're moving them from different positions, it, it makes a big difference. Yeah, they're working on the right shoulder. Still, the pads are still on, but they're working on the right shoulder of Hunter Push. He might be the best tackle that's out there right now, really the only natural tackle. Ryan Held in the middle of the offensive huddle right now, the whole offensive unit gathered around the head coach. Nate Baker is out there. He's the offensive line coach and run game coordinator. And the offense trying to get things sorted out. They're going to need at least a touchdown to tie this game. But first, the defense will come out, and they'll have an opportunity to do something of their own with the Missouri Southern offense backed up to the 10-yard line following the 10-yard spot foul. But the previous drive for Missouri Southern was a beauty. It really was. And it, again, it was into the wind, which uh, <laughs> is a little bit of a factor today. Has been in the first half, but it didn't seem to bother Missouri Southern in that, in that drive, the opening drive of the third quarter, which is a big uh, confidence booster for the Lions, I'm sure. Checking up on the other MIAA game in action and Central Missouri with a 10-7 advantage at home over Pitt State. A couple of 2-0 teams and Pitt State a top five team in the nation trailing by three. Sampson hands off and another nice hole and ripped to the ground. Man, that was a hard fought gain for Ashley and Thodius Ashley gets about nine. Suddenly the Missouri Southern offensive uh, line is starting to get a, a push on the defensive line for UNK and the run game is starting to be effective, which hasn't been the case in the previous two games and certainly wasn't in the first half of this game. So uh, they must have made some adjustments. Take away that uh, big 23 yarder in the first half and the ground game for Missouri Southern uh, was just 26 yards on 10 carries. Penalty flag. Ashley got the first, but there is a flag on the far sideline. So the run game maturing a bit this half for the Lions, but this could come back. Offsides. So another penalty against the Lopers. This time it's Travis Hall Jr., the linebacker. And it's, uh, it's been miscue after miscue. Six penalties for UNK. Add in the missed field goal and a turnover. And four timeouts on offense. It's just it kind of, it's been sloppy at times. Yeah, that's, a, that's exactly right. It's just been a little bit, uh, you know, it, it, based on what we saw the first two weeks of the season, uh, maybe the first half of the UCO game was a little bit like this, but uh, last week was certainly not like this. So, um, you know, UNK just seems to be not able to put things together and, and be consistent with either what they're doing offensively or making critical errors on defense. I mean, Second down and four right now with the Lopers needing to come up with a stop, keep this a one possession game. On play action, Sampson rifles it to the right side, right into the chest of his target, Akeem Gilbert. When you have two evenly matched teams, which I'd say UNK and Missouri Southern are both pretty evenly matched, and uh, the team that makes the most errors is, is going to have a hard time being successful. Sampson has had a nice game. The quarterback, 13 of 20, 116 yards and a touchdown. He's been efficient and effective. And he wants to pass here. It's batted in the air. And that's Quillen Felton. First time we've mentioned Quillen's name. He's a guy that this defensive coaching staff absolutely loves, a six foot four junior out of Georgia. He showed off some vertical there to get his paws on the football and bat it down. Uh, it just would have been nice if uh, UNK would have 
been able to pick that out of the air and get the turnover. But regardless, you put him back, now second and ten. Marlowe is the back on the right side. UNK brings pressure. They give to Marlowe, and Willis wraps him up, spins him down after a couple-yard gain to the 45. Be second down and about six, maybe a little longer. Willis has to come out of the game. He's a little off kilter after making that stop. And uh, Joko's had a good game so far. He's played well, and it's good to see that. He sometimes hasn't really shown up too much but uh, in the previous two games, but he's really playing well today. And he lays down on the sideline. We'll keep an eye on his status. It's third down and six. Seven seconds on the play clock for Missouri Southern. And they motion Campbell to the right. Sampson running out of time, throws, and... Oh, great catch. Did he haul it in? Yes. One of the best catches that you'll see this season, Jaden Stoshak on full dive, hands extended, was able to hold on to that football. That was an un unbelievable catch by that young man because he was pretty well covered and, and uh, the ball was a little bit high and, and he just laid out and pulled it in. That was a great catch. And it goes for 20 yards on third down and six. No challenge by UNK, and from our vantage point, probably the right decision. It was a terrific grab. It, it, he, he had it that stretched out. You know, it's one of those where he had it in his hands as it hit the ground. Did he maintain possession the whole way? You know, probably if you had the six camera shoots from one <laughs> side with the ultra zoom, maybe you'd, you don't know. Right. But, uh, in D2 football, I think that's the it's right. It's not going to happen, that, and, that I, and I think it was a, a probably a legitimate catch. It was a good job by him. Just a one-yard gain on first down. Missouri Southern, their offense ticking along thanks to some third-down conversions this half. And they've been set up in more favorable down and distance thanks to establishing the run game. That time, Anthodius Ashley gets a good six-yard pickup, setting up third down and three. And instead of third down and six or longer like uh, they've seen, you've seen some third down and two or threes right. for Missouri Southern in their two possessions this half. I would fully expect to see a play-action pass here. That's kind of been their style. I, I see a little run fake and maybe throw something out into the flat to try to get the first down. That's kind of been how they do it. Ashley stays in as the back. He does have a fullback in front of him in the pistol. Just a two-wide receiver formation, and it looks like the left guard might have flinched early. And that's right. It was the Samoan Tito Fualau that moved early. Well, an opportunity here for UNK again to get off the field. Jack Nicolaisen trying to get some energy behind the crowd. Lopers need something to cheer about here. Trailing by one touchdown, looking to get off the field. Only three defensive linemen. Throw to the right side is caught for a first down and more. Really nice route and catch by Akeem Gilmore. And the second third down conversion of this drive keeps the momentum with Missouri Southern. You know, Luke Sampson, I, I, I don't really like to use the term game manager, but he does a great job of just showing some poise and delivering the ball on time and getting those critical first downs. Nothing flashy, um, but he's smart. He knows where to go with the football, and he makes good reads. After that conversion, Missouri Southern now 5 for 10 on third down today. Four of those pickups coming this half. Training staff is talking with Quillen Felton on the sideline as the clock winds out in the third quarter. A quarter that belongs to Missouri Southern. They now own the eight-point cushion on the Midway Auto Dealership scoreboard. NCN Sports is brought to you by Midway Auto. For your next vehicle, go to thinkmidway.com and by News Channel Nebraska. Follow us on Twitter at NCN Sports for more highlights, interviews, rankings, and our full schedule.
first, I was really nervous and intimidated to buy a ring. My experience at Sardar Hamel was very easy. I felt like I walked out with the ring that was gonna make her go wow and say yes. I love my ring. It is so beautiful. I get compliments on it all the time. I always tell them Sardar Heyman. I love it. Yeah, we would definitely recommend Sardar Heyman. We're definitely, definitely coming, coming back. back. <laughs> Pretty sure. We have a wedding band to buy. So. We do, yes, we have a wedding band, so we'll be back for that. Sarter Heyman Jewelers, downtown 12th and O, South Point Pavilions, and Grand Island. At Zollner Ford, come and see our great selection of new Ford vehicles. Whether you're looking to buy new or you need a car serviced, it's our pleasure to assist you. Our online website makes shopping even easier. Browse our massive inventory of vehicles or schedule your next maintenance appointment. We even offer drop-off and pickup services. Stop by today or visit us online at zollnerofbeatrice.com. What does farming mean to you? For most, it's hard work, dedication, and livelihood. Unfortunately, that also comes with risk. At Nebraska Crop Insurance in Beatrice, they know the nonstop dedication involved to keep your family protected from that risk and ensure their livelihood. Not only do they know everything about the coverage you need, they're also farmers themselves. So protect what means the most to you with the agent who knows what it means to be a farmer. Nebraska Crop Insurance, 615 Dorsey Street in Beatrice. And Thodius Ashley starts off the fourth quarter with a solid carry. David Lilly makes the ankle tackle, and that saved a touchdown. It sets yep. up second down and three from the Loper six-yard line. UNK trailing by eight points here on your Midway Auto Dealership scoreboard. It's been close to really flipping the script, but right now the momentum all with the Lions. Exactly. Ashley had a good uh, chance to pop that. He's, he's pretty nifty. And uh, he just kind of is patient, waits for stuff to happen in front of him. And uh, it was a good job by Dave Lilly on that previous play of saving the touchdown. Now you got a third and short. So CJ probably going to go jumbo and try stop. to punch it in again. Third down and a yard within the five-yard line. Jack Nicolaisen comes out. Steven Matina is out there. This is the big defensive front for the Lopers. And again, it's Gilbert under center. He pushes forward, and we'll see where the marker is. The Lions are signaling that they got it on third and one. The clock is running, and it could start to become a factor. From it's still the initial, no signal. From the initial spot, I didn't think he got it, but now it looks like maybe... It's fourth down. It's fourth down. I'll bet they'll, they'll probably do it again. They're going to measure. So they'll bring out the standards. See if this is fourth down and short. And if it is fourth down and short, you'd expect they'd do the same play again or something like it. And we'll see. That's short. About a foot and a half. Fully expect them to do that again, I would think. I, you know, they, they've had two PATs blocked. Uh, you might as well just try to see if you can punch it in. They're, and uh, here comes the quarterback, Luke Sampson. Yeah. So Gilbert will not be lining up under center. It will be Sampson. He's a little bigger. Maybe that's what they're thinking. Six foot uh, five, 210 pound sophomore. They do have a wide receiver. You, they, they might try to fake it here. Throw a fade or something. Ashley is the back. There is a full back. Show stacks out here. Play action towards the end zone. Incomplete. And Whoa. there's no flags on the field. And the biggest play of the game and maybe of the season so far for the UNK defense. They force a turnover on downs at the four yard line. I have to admit, I'm scratching my head on that, Michael. I, I mean, uh, I mean, you know, Been you, running you, the ball you, pretty you try effectively. to muscle it forward for the first down, or you kick the kick the field goal and try to get the points. I, I understand trying to score a touchdown, but you need the first down. If you get the first down, then you got four plays to try to punch it in for the score. And they have been doing well with Gilbert getting the direct snap, whether in the shotgun or under center. Went away from it on fourth down and short, and the incompletion brings out T.J. Davis and company, needing 96 yards to get a touchdown. 
And then they could opt to go for two to try to tie it. Handoff, Zane Schwong. Schwong lowers his shoulder into a linebacker and gets to the six. Two hard-fought yards on first down. Well, now your goal is you got to get first downs. You got to just keep the drive alive. Um, they've done some good things moving, moving this direction from time to time, but you have to kind of keep them honest. You can't just try to plug it up there and, and uh, punch it out. But at the same time, you want to get enough yardage if you do have to punt. All-American quarterback T.J. Davis rolls out to his right, still looking downfield, throws, and has Zorian Stanton, but he drops the football. Stanton had been so sure-handed this season. Terrific today. Excellent catches in the first half. That one was on the mark, but he couldn't haul it in for a big game. Yeah, that's too, that's unfortunate. Zorian's had a good game, and you hate, you hate to see him come up on a big play like that and not, not make the catch. So now you got a critical third and eight here. You can not afford to be punting out of your own end zone if you're the Lopers trailing by eight points. Zane Schwong still in the game at running back. And Davis has three wide receivers to work with. Standing. Now unloads. That's Trey Moore. Moore, stutter step, and has his legs taken out. He's short. He, he just gets he to got the, the 11. First down, did he? No, that's a six yard gain when he needed eight. It's fourth down and two. Well, Moore, six foot four, 230, and I was down there on the field in pregame. He is bigger than that. He's a big, he's a big individual, yes. And, and uh, he went with the stutter step like there, maybe just lower the shoulder, yeah. but it's easy for me to say yeah. from up here. So here's Hunter Kraus, a couple of feet into the blue painted end zone, punting away to Jaden Stoshak. Shorter punt, Stoshak fair catch. And the Lions will get it in Loper territory, leading by a touchdown with three and a half minutes gone in the fourth quarter. Well, this is your fourth quarter brought to you by Visit Lincoln. See and experience all that Lincoln has to offer. Discover more at lincoln.org. Well, the Nebraska Kearney offense, 199 yards. They're averaging 330. Missouri Southern's defense is giving up 380 per game, but it hasn't clicked, especially in the second half for UNK. Yeah, I would say, you know, it's, uh, and I hate to be critical, it's, it hasn't really been that Missouri Southern's defense is playing that well. It's, it's more... UNK has just not been able to find continuity on their offensive drives. They, they uh, self-inflicted wounds, um, you know, critical errors, critical drops, penalties, um, you know, just a missed block here or there. You know, uh, it's just, and that hasn't been the way the UNK's played the last six quarters. And so uh, prior to this game. And so uh, it's unfortunate, but we're still in the game. We still have a chance if we can get a stop and get something good to happen. You never know what might, how this thing might turn out. UNK's defense needs a turnover. They've only forced one, an interception by Trey O'Gwin. That's all they've done so far this season. It hasn't been, it's been a solid defense, but not a turnover forcing unit. Maybe they can get that and make a big play here in the fourth quarter. Handoff. Ashley up the middle, and actually that's Marlowe. Marlowe keeps his feet churning to the 42 for a gain of five. Jabia Talong is being looked at on the sideline, a starting corner for UNK. They've and had a lot of guys that have been nicked up or, or taken out of the game by injury yeah. here this afternoon. Yeah, and unfortunately you hate to see the injury bug mount up too, as in addition to some other uh, issues that have taking place today so um, you know you don't want that to happen Javier Peterson is out in his place a senior handoff and this time the Loper defensive line able to get into the backfield and Quillen Felton makes the stop that's a loss of a couple of yards good to Third see CJ Keel in there too making a play third down has been a tough down for the Loper defense this half They 
They're starting to run out of time. Still a one possession game. But it would help out UNK's cause greatly to get a stop here. Stoshak motions to the right. That's where they look. The throw is to the right, it's caught. And enough for a first down. Going to Ezekiel Lang, who's been a focal point in the second half. The 6'3", 205-pound wideout moves the chains. Another third down conversion for Missouri Southern. The third down has been kind of the bugaboo. You, you know, usually you hope to get your opponent into third and long situations, but unfortunately we haven't been able to capitalize on those situations. Missouri Southern's doing a good job of, of making those critical first downs and keeping their drives alive. Missouri Southern, six for 12, and either four or five of those conversions are second half conversions. That's how you win ball games. Sampson unloads. Trey O'Gwin is there for the stop. Maybe a yard on that completion. Credit the safety, the senior, Trey O'Gwin, for coming up to make the play on Nick Pinella. Absolutely. That was a great play because from up here, it looked like he was going to have some room to run. That's a good job by Trey of recognizing that play and closing and making a good open field tackle and keeping it to a minimal gain. He is the guy with experience out there. And who the secondary is looking to to make a play and showed off his athleticism and speed on that effort. See if he can maybe get his hands on a football. That would be good. Or will Missouri Southern keep it on the ground on second and nine? It's play action. Sampson gets rid of it for a completion. Wow. Stacked up and still pushing forward. I believe he got the it might Stoshek. Get first down. He's just short. Man, and what a play. To him. Luke Sampson, he got lit up, delivered a good football, and then Stoshak did get enough for the first yep. down. That's just two individual superb efforts yep. against a well-played defense. Well, we do expect that we can track down Ryan Held in the post game, win or lose. That post game interview will be brought to you by Sarpy County Tourism. Another conversion for the Lions. That was caught. The flag comes flag in. Flag comes in. It's late in the area of the line. That could have uh, Loper coaches nervous. Holding. Mm. Well, that's a big benefit to UNK. Makes a possible field goal try more difficult and makes it first down and 20. That was another nice completion to Akeem Gilmore. Man, it, you know, Luke Sampson came in, well-regarded quarterback, completing 60% of his balls, six touchdowns, two picks, but he has just gotten better as this game has continued. He's got a lot of poise in the pocket. He delivers a good pass, and uh, he knows where to go with the football. Handoff. Lopers were ready for it. Not much space for Marlowe. Be second down at about 18. That quarterback, Sampson, huge figure out there at 6'5", 210. You see a lot of mobile quarterbacks, dual threat guys at this level. That's not his game. He's a stay-in-the-pocket guy, but that's been effective for the Lions. Very much so. And, you know, the fact is he's only a sophomore. Mm -hmm. And so he shows a lot of ability uh, for being a relatively young player. I don't know if he got in much last year, but he's doing a wonderful job for Missouri Southern now. On second and 17, he wants to pass. Goes over the middle, and it's broken up. Good coverage late coming over by the safety. That is C.J. Keel making the play, the redshirt sophomore from Indianola, Iowa. Big play by C.J. at that time. So hopefully we can get out of here another third and long situation. T.J. Davis, the All-American quarterback, turned to the stands trying to get some energy behind these Home folks in blue, third down and 17. And a four wide receiver spread formation for the Lions. The Lopers bring four, it's a draw rush up play. the middle and the draw gets a big chunk. It's short of the first down, but into the red zone to the 18, a gain of 15 on the handoff on fourth on third and 17. And here comes the kicking unit. 
to try a field goal for Missouri Southern. That was a huge play. Huge play. They did a good job of that uh, on that, you know, running that little draw play. They got everybody spread out. I, they caught me by surprise. I certainly, the way they've been throwing the f football, expected them to, to, run, uh, to throw it there, and that was a good call by their offensive coordinator. This Hopefully. will be the shortest field goal attempt of the season so far for Drake Reese. He's hit three from more than 40. A 35-yarder has plenty of distance and had the proper path. It's true and add three to the Missouri Southern score. It's now 18 to seven Lions over the Lopers, six minutes and seven seconds remaining on the Aurora Cooperative scoreboard. Order your dream vehicle today with no money down. If you don't love it when it arrives, leave it with absolutely no obligation. We are professional grade at Central Nebraska's premier GM dealer. Midway Chevrolet, Buick GMC and Kearney or think midway.com slash GM. NCN Sports is brought to you by Currency. Visit GoCurrency.com for details. By Central Nebraska Orthopedics, dedicated to the motion of life. And by Region 4 Behavioral Health, quality mental health and substance abuse services. Anything for the floor. O Street Carpet has it and more. From little feet to little paws to updates and overhauls. From soft and cozy to durable and resilient from something that blends in or something that's different. From DIY to custom install, O Street Carpet can help you with it all. Whatever your needs are for the floor, O Street Carpet has it and more. Women have a one in eight chance for developing breast cancer. Early detection makes a difference. Beatrice Community Hospital's Imaging Center can help with the latest technology. From screening with 3D mammography, breast MRI, breast ultrasound, and breast biopsy. All services conveniently located in the BCH's Imaging Center. Schedule your screening today. Incredible care, incredibly close. Well, the kicking game, a big factor in this contest. You have to give credit to Drake Reese. He has not allowed a kick return yet. Uh, Nebraska Kearney first in the conference through a couple of games in kick return and punt return, and both parts of those uh, special team units have been completely negated, largely thanks to Drake Reese, and you can credit the punter as well for Missouri Southern Mitchell Corey. Yeah, they're, uh, Missouri Southern's a well-rounded football team. They play pretty good, solid defense. Uh, they Offensively, they're, they're doing some good stuff. Special teams, are, they're solid. So, once again, UNK's trying to get lined up. UNK this half with uh, just 19 yards of offense. Davis loses the football. It's still on the turf, and Missouri Southern has it. The Lions are fired up. A penalty flag comes in late. That'll be 15 yards against Missouri Southern. But that's after the play. They strip the quarterback, Davis, recover a football that sat on the ground for it felt like an eternity, and will have first down nearing the red zone ahead by 11 points. Just another unfortunate turn of events as this, as this game has gone today. So that's on uh, Kavanis Davis, defensive end. Uh, we mentioned transfers from D1. How about this? Davis played at McDate, an FCS school, then played at the University of Florida. And that 15-yard penalty on Davis does back up uh, Missouri Southern to the 39, but now uh, Nebraska Kearney desperately needs a stop, and they need to do it sooner than later. Handoff, reversing course, finding some room is the elusive Ashley. He gets five yards by changing his mind and running to the right. Travis Hall made a good play there because it looked like he, he was 
maybe going to go to the end zone. Um, he's a he's a pretty good little running back. He hasn't seen much action this year, but he has kind of sparked their run game a little bit in the second half. And UNK has run seven plays of offense for 19 yards in the second half. You will lose every time. Most time, yep. Handoff. And a smart play calling here from the Lions. They're going to the ground game to Anthodius Ashley, a reliable back, and draining the clock. And here comes third down. Third down. This has I been would, an issue. I would for expect the a short pass to probably try to find Showstack. <laughs> Those two wideouts on the right side. That's Lang and Showstack. They're the two that have been the most frequently targeted. Showstack, one of the top in the league, and Lang, one of the biggest. Third down and four. Sampson, hands off, and able to get the edge and get the first down is Anthodius Ashley. They keep it on the ground and get a first down, and the Lopers are in big trouble now if they're unable to force a turnover. Yeah, it's, just getting, it's, it's been that kind of a game. Uh, UNK has just not been able to pull the trigger, if you will, when, when they've come up with opportunities to, for a big stop or a big play on offense. Uh, and, you know, part of that is Missouri Southern has, has played well. Uh, part of that is, is UNK has, has just kind of made a lot of unforced errors today, unfortunately. And it's felt like a snowball effect where it, you put yourself in position to succeed, don't, and then you you're lost your confidence and your energy. Exactly. And the defense has been out there a lot. As you They're mentioned, right. the offense has only played seven, seven plays in the whole uh, second half, so the defense is starting to wear out a little bit, I think. That was the 59th play run by Missouri Southern compared to 41 for Nebraska Kearney. Missouri Southern, one of the worst in the league in terms of time of possession coming into this game, averaging just 23 minutes of time of <laughs> possession through two contests. That's in a 60-minute game. Only 23 minutes on average. But today, they have held the ball for more than eight minutes longer than the Lopers. Which uh, is definitely a big change from what we've seen in the last few years of the UNK. Of course, new, new offensive scheme. Things aren't going to be the same, but... Um, yeah, yeah when minus you don't have two the ball. and turnovers will will be a part of that for sure. The timeout taken by the Lopers, and they're still just down 11, but need some things to break their way. We'll return with three minutes remaining on the Aurora Cooperative scoreboard. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. UNK is a place where quality education meets hands-on learning and going the extra mile gets rewarded. It's a place where you can put yourself out there, reach your goals, and set new ones you never thought possible. Be yourself, but develop the best version of you. Let us show you what you're made of. Be blue, be gold, be bold. Apply now to the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Learn more at unk.edu. Missouri Southern 7 for 14 on third down. UNK's defense needs a stop here. If they force a field goal, then it would still be a 14-point deficit if it's made. Third down and 7. Sophomore quarterback Luke Sampson hands off and nowhere to go. Just laying down is Javion Marlowe and expect to see the field goal unit. And that's what we see. Drake Reese who might have the strongest leg. Of course, haven't seen every kicker in the right. MIAA, but it's hard to, hard to picture a stronger leg than this. I mean, he has had distance and more. Yeah, he's and just a, a few uh, PAT misses mixed in. Obviously an excellent kicker. 
This will be a 39-yard try off of the right foot of Reese, a sophomore from Cassville, Missouri. With two seconds on the play clock, they snap it. Good penetration, and that one is wide to the right. So Reese misses, and UNK with one timeout will take over trailing by 11. They'll get the ball at their own 19. So hurry up offense. We'll get to see what Colby Ellis and company can dial up and get going for Nebraska Kearney. This has not been a big play offense so far this season. The longest run of the year, 19 yards. They do have a 54-yard pass play to Cole Brown. And those are the season longs for plays. Which is highly unusual when you got a guy like T.J. Davis in the backfield, but um, it's just kind of been the nature of the, the beast this year. First down and 10, Davis to pass. Steps up, goes deep over the middle, and it's hauled in at the 40. It's Reggie Anderson all the way to the 32-yard line. Definitely needed that. They were in a two-deep coverage, and we split the safeties, and that's what happens when you're in that type of a coverage. If you can get into the middle of the field, usually you get some big plays. A 46-yarder. Davis throws again. It's caught some space and bouncing to the outside and just falling down is Sev Foster, a first down for the Lopers. And with the clock under two minutes to go, it stops with first downs. Now from the 21-yard line, the All-American quarterback snaps it in a hurry, standing like a statue, throws to Jamal Joseph. Joseph puts his foot in the turf, turns corners, does not get the first down, gets six, maybe seven yards. It's second down and three. The Lopers have one timeout. They don't use it there. Davis throws towards the end zone, leaping and hauling in the ball. Cole Brown, a 14-yard strike. And the no-huddle hurry-up offense goes 81 yards for a Loper touchdown. What a drive by UNK. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, it's not over yet, says Ryan Held and TJ Davis. Probably going to go for two here to make it a three-point game. Then you hope you get an onside kick and, and can kick a field goal to tie it up, go into overtime. Cannot afford to use a timeout in advance of this two-point conversion try. Coach Held is directing the traffic here with 12 seconds on Struggling the play clock. Struggling to get lined up. Oh, they've now reset the play clock, so plenty of time. No need to hurry. But the Lopers do take that timeout. I or, said, or is it stopped by the officials? We'll Trayvon Moore was struggling to, to get lined up. It wasn't sure he was supposed to be on the line of scrimmage or off the line of scrimmage. Moses Harper, the passing game coordinator, getting out as far as he could. Wide receiver coach to try to get instructions. You can't get past the 25-yard line, so with the ball all the way over here, the Lopers... Uh, <laughs> desperate <laughs> trying to get the right situation. Now the officials set that ball on the left hash, and that does allow UNK to get set to go for two. That's Brown in motion. Make that Anderson. Davis rolling right. TJ tucks, and he's short. Didn't get in. Couldn't get anybody open. Trying to do it himself and shoved out of bounds, but the Lopers do get a touchdown and a burst of offense. The onside kick on the other side. Don't go anywhere on News Channel Nebraska. My dad's addiction and death from overdosing on opioids has taught me it's likely that everybody knows somebody who is struggling with this very problem. Losing my mentor, my best friend. He took one pill too many that ultimately killed him. A four-play, 78-yard drive that took just 55 seconds. The Lopers had 19 yards of offense on seven plays in the half before that. Picture perfect for the Lopers, and now it comes down to an onside kick attempt. Gabe Hines 
Carney High product was a Nebraska Cornhusker. Didn't see action for NU, but he is the featured guy now as a senior for the Lopers. Can he place this in a spot for the hands team to make a play on it? First onside attempt of the season for Nebraska Kearney. They have height out there, Joko Willis, Q Felton, a couple of defensive guys, Zach Schlager. Here it is, Hines. Keeps it low, takes a big hop, and taken by Missouri Southern, recklessly running with the football. Ezekiel Lang, fall down, young man. <laughs> hey, Only bad things can happen yeah. if you keep running with the football. <laughs> He's fortunate that uh, the UNK, who went to go strip that, could not get it out of his hands. And now Missouri Southern is uh, likely a couple of handoffs away from putting this one away. Uh, UNK has one timeout left which they'll have to burn out of, uh, right away, I'm assuming. So Joko Willis getting looked at right now. He's crouched at midfield. Important linebacker. I haven't profiled him yet, but uh, uh, folks should know, highly touted guy. Went to community college in Kansas and then went to Auburn on scholarship. Played a couple seasons for the Tigers. We're coming back to Nebraska Kearney, and he's playing for his JUCO coach, Jesse Ornelas, the godfather, the linebacker <laughs> coach. And hopefully uh, JUCO just fine, and we'll be good to go. Uh, sometimes disappointment makes those uh, little aches and pains feel a lot worse, too. And, sure and, does. Uh, I'm sure he's a disappointed young man. One timeout for the Lopers. And the kneeling formation is out for the Lions. So Sampson under center. And takes that knee. Will Coach Held take the timeout? No. I don't believe he will. Today's broadcast was brought to you in part by Zollner Ford Lincoln. If you're looking for a vehicle in southeast Nebraska, pay him a visit in Beatrice. Well, a really tough one here for UNK to, to take a defeat, a game that they, they probably feel like they had an edge over the Lions and uh, self-inflicted. Absolutely. Drop this one by five. You know, Missouri Southern, and as we said, they, they're two pretty evenly matched football teams. I think I, I'm a little biased, obviously, but I think UNK probably has a little bit more talent, but Missouri Southern showed it today, and, and UNK was, was not able to get out of their own way, if you will. They, too many unforced errors and critical mistakes, and it ended up costing them a game. So the Lopers takes the defeat and drop to one and two. Missouri Southern improves to two and one. We'll have a visit with the head coach, Ryan Held, on the field when we come back to Kearney. You're proud of the community you live in. Taking care of the people in it isn't a job, it's an honor. At John Henry's, we take pride in being relied upon by the great people of Lincoln and the surrounding areas. A hard day's work means a happy customer, and making happy customers has been our goal all along. A team of expert plumbers, drain specialists, and HVAC professionals dedicated to finding solutions for our customers. Because for us, a successful day ends with a handshake and a smile. John Henry's, our family serving yours. NCN Sports is brought to you by Tom Dinsdale Auto. Celebrating 20 years, Tom Dinsdale Auto is proud to be community driven. And by News Channel Nebraska. Check us out on Twitter at NCN Sports. NCN Sports is brought to you by Currency. Visit GoCurrency.com for details. By Central Nebraska Orthopedics, dedicated to the motion of life. And by Region 4 Behavioral Health, quality mental health and substance abuse services. 
For over 40 years, Claybaugh Pharmacy has been your trusted, family-owned, full-service pharmacy. We provide traditional medical options, medical equipment, immunizations, and over-the-counter products. We take pride in going above and beyond to improve the health of our community. And to ensure you have a seamless experience, manage your profile and refills with a touch of the finger from home. Claybaugh Pharmacy in downtown Beatrice, your hometown family-owned pharmacy. At Zollner Ford, come and see our great selection of new Ford vehicles. Whether you're looking to buy new or you need a car serviced, it's our pleasure to assist you. Our online website makes shopping even easier. Browse our massive inventory of vehicles or schedule your next maintenance appointment. We even offer drop-off and pickup services. Stop by today or visit us online at zollnerofbeatrice.com. It all started long ago with cattle in mind, and it's still the major focus today of Powder River Livestock Handling Equipment and your friends at Valley Vet Supply in Marysville. They want to provide you with the best equipment. That's why they sell Powder River. It truly does stand the test of time. Powder River is a name you can trust. From cattle handling systems to gates and feeders, Powder River makes equipment for life. Come see for yourself at Valley Vet Supply on Highway 36 in Marysville. UNK is a place where quality education meets hands-on learning, and going the extra mile gets rewarded. It's a place where you can put yourself out there, reach your goals, and set new ones you never thought possible. Be yourself, but develop the best version of you. Let us show you what you're made of. Be blue. Be gold. Be bold. Apply now to the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Learn more at unk.edu. Landmark Implement is your local authorized John Deere dealer. Landmark's trained and certified sales staff will help you find the right equipment for your needs, all backed by Landmark's extensive parts and service network. Whether it's a tractor, planter, combine, lawn and garden tractor, or gator, every piece of equipment in our inventory is ready to work hard for your operation. Landmark's team works together to make sure everything that is sold meets their quality standards. Stop by your local Landmark Implement or learn more at LandmarkImp.com to experience the Landmark difference. Some jobs are hard work, long hours, busy days, late nights. But there's something in us that keeps us going when we know what we're doing is making a difference in someone's life. Because it's the hardest jobs that are the most important. And that pride you feel makes it more than worth the effort. NPPD, powering our state, empowering your life. Tom Dinsdale Automotive is celebrating our 20th anniversary. 20 years of building lifelong relationships. 20 years of providing superior customer experiences. 20 years of supporting the community. For 20 years, we've been building trust and loyalty by treating every customer like family on every visit. We're proud to serve Grand Island and the surrounding areas. Thank you for 20 great years, and we look forward to many more. Help us celebrate 20 years of service. Stop in today. <laughs> that is literally the funniest thing ever. And then I said... <laughs> it wasn't, but this guy could use a win. Even if it's not as big of a win as I get with free Kasasa Cash checking. Kasasa Cash pays me a really high rate and refunds ATM withdrawal fees nationwide. So I feel like a queen. Has a mega bank ever made you feel that way? Or is it more like this guy? Take back banking with Kasasa Cash. Get Kasasa checking at Liberty First Credit Union. At Nebraska Orthopedic Center, they provide comprehensive orthopedic health care. Their physicians are highly skilled in all areas of orthopedic and sports medicine, including spine surgery, foot and ankle, hand and upper extremities, fracture care, and total joint replacement. Their expertise includes the medical management of injuries through physical and rehabilitative methods or surgical intervention. To schedule an appointment or to learn more about Nebraska Orthopedic Center and their family of 25 physicians, go online to NebraskaOrtho.com. That's NebraskaOrtho.com. Nebraska Orthopedic Center is your healing destination. Let your next adventure take flight in Sarpy County, Nebraska for some high-flying fun. Legendary family adventures. Up this world shopping. Star-studded evenings. 
and award-winning experiences. Our flights are never canceled. Stay, play, and plan your getaway at GoSarpy.com. Coach Ryan held for UNK, a tough defeat there. Had the team gathered, what was the message to the group after this one? Well, I think we're gonna be in every game. Um, it's just a matter of, uh, in order to win those games, you know, we just had too many penalties, too many just uh, situational, catastrophic sequences that really hurt us. Um, you gotta tip your hat to them. Uh, they had a lot of time of possession. Uh, I mean, we didn't have many plays in the second half. Um, you know, we gotta be able to convert. Um, but, you know, we just, when we get things rolling, we would just have some, some play that, that, you know, we, we, we just can't have. Um, so we're disappointed. Uh, we're disappointed. I, I really felt we, we would have played better. Uh, but you know what? We didn't. And uh, even though we lost by five, um, you know, we got to be able to, to uh, fix those mistakes. Uh, now, the thing about this league is feel sorry for yourself. You got to go next week on the road against a really good opponent. We just have to continue to work and, and practice and get better. That's, that's what we just have to continue to do. Well, thanks, Coach. We'll see you when you get back home. Yep, appreciate you. We have your top plays and final thoughts when we return to Kearney. Anything for the floor. O Street Carpet has it and more. From little feet to little paws, to updates and overhauls. From soft and cozy to durable and resilient. From something that blends in or something that's different. From DIY to custom install, O Street Carpet can help you with it all. Whatever your needs are for the floor, O Street Carpet has it and more. confident about the used vehicle you're buying with Midway Certified Pre-Owned. Our lowest tassel-free prices every day on a great selection of Midway Certified Pre-Owned Fords, Hondas, Toyotas, and more. Available now at your Midway Auto dealership locations in Kearney or online at thinkmidway.com. Plumbing needs attention? Trust the experts at John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, Air, and Electrical. No matter the size of the job, John Henry's brings extensive expertise to handle everything your home's plumbing system requires. So whether your drain is clogged, your water heater needs an upgrade, or you want to remodel your kitchen or bathroom, we're here for you. Reach out to us today and discover why since 1996, we've proudly served families as the most reliable plumbing company in the Lincoln area. John Henry's, our family serving yours since 1996. Some jobs are hard work, but it's often the hardest jobs that are the most important. NPPD, powering our state empowering your life. When what you do makes a vast impact on the state and its communities, there's nothing better. NPPD, powering our state, empowering your life. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. UNK is a place where quality education meets hands-on learning and going the extra mile gets rewarded. It's a place where you can put yourself out there, 
reach your goals, and set new ones you never thought possible. Be yourself, but develop the best version of you. Let us show you what you're made of. Be blue. Be gold. Be bold. Apply now to the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Learn more at unk.edu. Women have a 1 in 8 chance for developing breast cancer. Early detection makes a difference. Beatrice Community Hospital's Imaging Center can help with the latest technology. From screening with 3D mammography, breast MRI, breast ultrasound, and breast biopsy. All services conveniently located in the BCH's Imaging Center. Schedule your screening today. Incredible care, incredibly close. At Zollner Ford, come and see our great selection of new Ford vehicles. Whether you're looking to buy new or you need a car serviced, it's our pleasure to assist you. Our online website makes shopping even easier. Browse our massive inventory of vehicles or schedule your next maintenance appointment. We even offer drop-off and pickup services. Stop by today or visit us online at zollnerofbeatrice.com. A new year, a fresh start, a resolution to grow more, gain more, give more. The process is the same, plant, grow, harvest, but the way you do it is always evolving. And so are we, Aurora Cooperative. Grow, gain, give, Aurora and you. Well, thank you very much to Coach Ryan Held for taking time in the postgame following a difficult defeat at home. Uh, Missouri Southern gets one over UNK 18-13. to Let's look at your top plays brought to you by Currency. Does your business need help financing big ticket items? Currency is here to help. Visit GoCurrency.com for details. A couple of teams entering this game at 1-1, one and one, uh, hoping to get to a winning record in the MIAA, thinking this one will be competitive, and it was. UNK football, it's TJ Davis, the All-American quarterback, keeping the play alive, finding Sev Foster for what looked to be a first down, but he can't squeeze the football, and it's intercepted by Peyton McKee. That leads to three points for Missouri Southern. They have a kicker that can really boot the football, and Drake Reese sends it through for three points. Now the Lions on offense later in the quarter, stepping up in the pocket and finding his favorite target, Jaden Shostak, is the quarterback, Luke Sampson. Sampson already seven touchdown passes on the season by that point, but the Lopers start to move the football. This time it's Foster. He squeezes it for the big cane. UNK trying a field goal to finish off that drive in the second quarter, but a miss from Gabe Hines had the distance, but it pulled to the left some. Now, second quarter action again, and nearing the goal line, T.J. Davis finds Zane Schwong, escorted out of bounds at the three, setting up this. A rush in by Napier, his first touchdown to Mikas Napier for the Lopers. That makes it 9-7 to seven at half, and Missouri Southern adds to their lead in the second half. Their opening drive, a brilliant one, finished off uh, by that rush uh, by Javion Marlowe. And the Lopers, uh, a defense uh, able to, to force a field goal try, but another make extends the lead even farther for Missouri Southern. UNK in that two-minute desperation offense has their best drive of the game, and they do find a touchdown, but cannot get the onside kick and take a five-point defeat, 18-13. to The Lopers are 1-2, and two, heading to Pitt State next week. Well, Michael Shively, Scott Hoffman with you. Some final thoughts following this uh, a loss for the Lopers. You know, it's it's just going to leave a sour taste, oh. kind of like the Central Oklahoma road game did. And, and to have two of those in your first three, that's a difficult way to begin the season. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, <laughs> I'm king of cliches, I guess, but uh, ifs and buts. Um, you know, we've lost two games, one by three points and one by five. Didn't play well. And yet, um, we're talented enough to be right there at the end of the game. If we just make a few plays, we 
have an outside chance of being three and zero, but that's not the case, and that's that's why you play the game, of course, to coin a phrase. But um, you know, this is definitely a game of, of ifs and and buts today. Uh, UNK just didn't seem to be able to click um, on offense pretty much all game until the last drive. And on the defensive side, they played very well the first half, and, and Missouri Southern hats off to them. They came out and made some good adjustments, were able to control the game, run the football, get critical first downs and that kind of stuff in the second half where UNK hardly ever had the ball in their hands. And um, it, it was really the difference in the game. Probably some big, big things that we could have done a little better, obviously. And if we do that, take care of business, we might win this thing. And the number of plays, Missouri Southern ran 20 more plays than the Lopers did. They were 7 of 15 on third down, 1 for 2 on fourth down. Those stats uh, playing a big role in this game, turning out the way it did. Time of possession also one-sided. But the Lopers do get to regroup. They go and play at Pitt State next week. At Pitt State showing that they are vulnerable. A top five team in the nation. The reigning conference champs are trailing 17-10 to 10 on the road against Central Missouri uh, early on in the third quarter. Other scores, uh, Missouri Western 10, Central Oklahoma nothing. That game in the second quarter. But again, next week at Pitt State, then the Lopers do return home after that. An exciting matchup with Washburn. We expect that to be another tight contest to teams that uh, should be pretty evenly matched. A 2 p.m. kickoff for homecoming on Saturday, September 30th. We, we will be there for that uh, with your pregame show starting about 15 minutes before kickoff. Uh, so the Lopers hope to get a win and come back uh, and keep that momentum going. Uh, Scott, thanks for uh, Absolutely. being a part of this today. Well, you know, the, the great thing about athletics is you always get another chance. And so UNK, if they can regroup, you never know. Uh, there's definitely a lot of talent on this football team. If they can go down to Pitt, and we've beaten down, we've, we've won against the Gorillas down there. So, you know, you never know what will happen. So the Lopers dropped this one, a uh, hard uh, defeat to take, 18-13. to 13. They are 1-2. and two. We'll talk to you on September 30th next time from Foster Field. On behalf of Scott Hoffman and our crew led by Danny Alvarado, I'm Michael Shively. Have a great rest of your day.